Um, this is a public meeting of the Berlin Conservation Commission occurring via Zoom webinar on August 5th, 2020, starting at 7 p.m. Um, as a preliminary matter, matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other participants may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Anything you broadcast may be captured by the recording. So next, I must confirm member access. This is John Aney, Chair of the Berlin Conservation Commission. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. So stating each member's name, Carolyn McDonald. Here. Walter Bickford. Here. Louise Janda. Here. Liz DiCara. Here. Steve Beard. Yahoo! <laughs> Robin Berry. Here. Holly Kennedy, Kennedy de Grudela. Here. Did you, did you, okay. And then Leanne, Le, Leanne Leahy is assisting with the production. Here. And, yep. Anticipated speakers on the agenda who may not be able to speak right now, but anyway, uh, they include Kyle McDonald, Nicole Hayes, and Scott Morris. Um, with a quorum of the commission president, I call this meeting to order at 7.04 p.m. on Wednesday, August 5th, 2020. This is an open, this open meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. Specific information in the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and our parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found on the Town of Berlin website at www.townofberlin.com. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly, publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely provided reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. While no in-person attendance of members of the public is permitted, every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so, despite best efforts, we will post to the town's website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Ensuring the public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. The standard public comment portion of this meeting will accommodate limited public comment. For this meeting, the Conservation Commission is convening using the Zoom platform as posted on the agenda, identifying how the public may join. Meeting materials, the public is encouraged to follow along during this meeting using the posted agenda, unless I'm not otherwise. Uh, supporting materials are available. It's, no, there's no supporting materials. Um, Commission members and speakers on the agenda, please remember to mute your phone or microphone when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. To the extent that our technical capability allows, public comments will be permitted during the public comment portion of this meeting as follows. Attendees, phones, and other devices will be muted unless and until they raise their hand and are recognized by me to speak. I ask each member of the public who wishes to speak to identify their name. And it will afford each speaker time to ask a question and make a brief comment. Finally, each vote taken in this meeting will be conducted by a roll call vote. That is that. All right. Don't we have a bylaw that if uh, somebody's eating some good dinner during the meeting, they have to share with others? Well, is it good though? How do you know if there, it's good? She's got a, oh, she's just, look at her. It's really good. It's beef <laughs> that I grew and uh, grass-fed beef and green beans and fresh basil and olive oil. <laughs> Yum. Sorry. That actually that does sound pretty good. This. Um, I wouldn't necessarily mix basil and beets though, just, just saying. Okay. I know, I was on the fence, but it's working for me. Uh, <laughs> Liz um, out. All right, so agenda, Let, let's go, it's, yeah, let's do the minutes. Um, draft. Is, is, is everybody fine with me reading the minutes? Yep. Okay. Yep. Better you than me. And what I have I to know? screen share. I can't. I'm eating. <laughs> I 
Okay, everybody can see that? Yes. Yeah, sure can. Great. Uh, minute, meeting minutes, July 15th, 2020. Meeting opened at 735. John opened the meeting by stating that it was being recorded and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> by executive, uh, um, John reviewed the rules for holding the role. Meeting John Robinberg was recognized as a member of the commission and a roll call vote attendance was taken for the follow with the following results. Attendees, John Amy Chair, Steve Beard, Louise Jonda, Walter Bickford, Carolyn McDonald, Liz DiGuerra, Robin Berry. Lee, Lee Ann Leahy opened the meeting and then handed it over to Robin to host but stayed on as co-host. Other attendees, Kyle McDonald, who I think his name has a, I think there's a A there. Of Goddard Engineering, representing the NOI hearing applicant, Nicole Hayes, wetland scientist for Goddard Engineering, and Craig Wumbold, NOI applicant. Um, minutes of previous meeting, minutes for the July 1st, 2020 meeting were reviewed and amended. Walter moved to accept the minutes as edited. Carolyn seconded the motion, which passed unanimously by roll call vote. Treasury report, nope. Bills and forms, nope. Mails and notices. Notice from DEP that drought has, occurred, has been declared for all of Worcester County. John stated that because of the drought, the classification of perennial stream cannot be changed to intermittent. Invasives notice from SVT stating they're doing more training for invasives mapping and are looking for volunteers. Wetlands, A, uh, Solar Farm, DEP 107-0239. John reported on Pat Garner's site visit to the solar farm on July 7th. Pat, Pat reported there was no evidence of erosion and no new siltation. The site shows 70% germination. The site appears stable, but could be subject to more erosion if heavy rainstorms occur. The pictures included in the report show weeds growing everywhere, an indication of poor soil conditions. The CONCOM has been notified by the town administrator that the electrical inspector has been advised not to do the final inspection and sign off until he hears from her. The CC will notify the town administrator when the conditions that the CCs have requested have been met. Three, Walter commented that there has been discussion on the state level that land suitable for farming not be used for solar panels. The roofs of buildings, landfills, parking lots, and, and along power lines are being suggested as alternate sites. B, Highland Ridge, DEP 107241. Pat Gardner made a site visit to homes at Highland Ridge and reported that work being done looks good. C, DEP 107023. The CC has not received an update on progress. John has been in touch with the engineers on the project and will follow up. Uh, which, what, which, which one was 0253? <laughs> which, does anybody remember what 0253 is? I can look it up. Uh, which engineers have you been in touch with? Nobody. Oh. That's the thing. Hold on a second. I mean, you can just look it up online while I'm reading. It looks like it's uh, 276 West Street. 276 West Street. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Okay. Should we D add one, that? Yeah, yeah. We have a follow up on that. Um, D100 River Road West, Old Tile Farm Enforcement Order. Walter reported that the owner is asking for a three-week extension since their wetlands expert, Dave Burke, has not been able to do the wetlands flagging. Uh, Walter, two, Walter moved to allow them a three-week extension, the second the motion, which passed with a unanimous roll call vote. Three, Louise reported on the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. E28 Oak Street, DP 107-0248. The Zoning Board of Appeals have inquired if the owners of 8 Oak Street have had requested a COC for completion of the work on the site as of, as of this date, there has not been a request. John will look into it. Six appointments hearings, 730 NOI um, for Marble Road, Assessors Map 12, Parcel 24-3. Kyle McDonald of Goddard Engineering, representing Craig, Craig Wumhold, represented the NOI application for a lot of the corner of Marlboro Road and River Road West. The lot is mostly in Berlin with a small portion, portion of the town of Hudson. So this is map 12, plot 24.3. Um, a site visit was done by members of the CONCOM to inspect the wetland delineation. The CC recommended a peer reviewer be hired for the project and have them conduct a site visit also. Three, Kyle reported the proposed plan show the location of a house and barn on the site, which will be both located within a 100 foot buffer zone, but outside the 20 foot zone requested by the CONCOM. A wetland crossing, which would cross an intermittent stream is necessary to accommodate both the house and the barn on the lot. The crossing would consist of a box culvert that would result in 380 square feet of alter alteration. Proposed plan shows a 585 square feet area of wetland replication. This area 
exceeds one on area of replication required by law, the CONCOM recognized that the replication was attached to current weather. For the plan shows a proposed erosion, which controls, <laughs> which include a silt fence and stake hay bills. Uh, the CONCOM is in receipt of an email letter from the town of Hudson, verifying they will allow a tie-in with their sewage and water systems. Kyle stated he is in contact with Bill Brookings and the Shoba Board of Health, who stated that Berlin Board of Health will be meeting on the matter. John also stated that he had received an email from the town administrator, Margaret Narderwitz, Margaret Narderwitz said Hudson will allow the tie-in without consulting with the town of Berlin. Could allow, I'm sorry. Seven, the CONCOM members discussed the following issues, why Hudson was allowed this connection when they had denied a connection on another request to whether the area in Hudson was large enough to allow a tie-in. Three, would allowing this crossing set a precedent when we had denied other crossings in the past. Four, the effect of long-term pollution on wetlands by the use of lawn fertilizers. Five, the fact that in a prior approved plan, a house was sited near the road between the wetland and the road. Seven, no DP number has been assigned to the NOI, so the CONCOM could not make a determination on the NOI Kyle asked to continue the meeting, hearing to a later date. The CONCOM will continue the hearing to August 5th, meeting at 7.30 p.m. pending the issue of, of a DEP number. Seven, uh, land force habitat management. Uh, Walter commented on the spread of invasives and junk timber on a conservation land. He suggested we hire a forester to help develop a management plan. He particularly cited the invasives and junk pine tr trees bordering the trails from Berlin Meadow. He offered to look into grants from state and federal agencies to help cover the cost of eradicating the basis. John suggested he also contact Dan Stimson of SVT. John also brought up the idea of doing a controlled burn to help reduce the chance of wildfires. The CC discussed whether the wetlands fund would be used for removing invasives since many of the wetlands are filled with invasives. Five, wetland. Walter reported that he had worked with Jim Spinney of the highway department in removing some bittersweet in Berlin Meadow. He suggested we look into making improvements in the flower garden at the middle. B, liaison with the ZBA. Louise reported on a conversation with the chair of the ZBA on the need to improve communication between boards on matters of mutual issues. Louise agreed to be the liaison with the ZBA. Walter volunteered to be a liaison with the Board of Health. The CONCOM has ties with the planning board since Carolyn McDonald is also a member of the planning board. And Steve is on the Earthworks Advisory Committee, which works on this with a select board on earth moving issues. C, report on Northborough CONCOM meeting PISCA. John reported on Zoom Northborough CONCOM meeting he attended to discuss issues in both the Berlin and Northborough lands on PISCA. Louise was also there. Rogue trails in both Northborough and Berlin, unauthorized cutting of trees on the Northborough side of Mount PISCA. It was decided to offer a $500 reward to anyone who could provide information that would lead to identifying who was doing the tree cutting and putting in rogue trails. The Northborough police chief, who was in attendance report, the Northborough police were doing checks in the area. D, 47 acres for sale, love all, serve all. Kellen reported that she, along with Tim Wheeler of the planning board, Peg Stone of the select board, and the building inspector, Margaret, Todd administrator, met with people from Lassa to discuss their plans to build a center on the 47 acres for sale on Central Street. Their plan is to build on only two or three acres of the land. Carolyn stated that providing water and sewage to the site could be issues. Eight, old business wetland bylaw. The members discussed how to proceed in writing a wetlands bylaw. Members will look into the NACC bylaw discussed at our next meeting. B, Conference Conservation Commission Facebook page. Robin volunteered to be administrator of the page. Karen will work with her on it. Nine, land acquisition. Laura, no update. Ten, land management. Wendler, Peachill Conservation Area. John reported that the trail signs are up. He also reported on a collapsed stone bridge that acts as a culvert over an intermittent stream. It's not very intermittent, actually. Um, it might be a permanent. Perennial. Um, the CONCOM discussed how to proceed. Walter Vald to take a look at it and report back at the next meeting. Um, community outreach, wildlife survey. At the last meeting, Walter suggested that CONCOM sponsor Wolf Berlin Wildlife Survey. It was suggested that we contact the Tonto Middle and, and uh, Middle School and High School Regional, whatever, to Honto to see if we could involve students to set up a site for the inventory. It's also suggested to post something on social media to so requesting volunteers to head up the project. Walter and Louise will work on the issue. Liz moved that we adjourn the meeting. Steve seconded the motion was passed unanimously by a roll call vote. The meeting ended at roughly 9.20 p.m. Minutes recorded by Louise, John, and John Haney. Um, any discussion? Does it? Go ahead. Do you, do you want it to say? Yes, Liz. Um, 
where it says John reported trail signs are up on the Peach Hill Conservation and it acts as a culvert over an intermittent stream. Do we want to change it to just a stream? Sure. It That's, it's nice to be ambiguous sometimes. Hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Okay. Entertain a motion to accept the minutes with those very, very minor changes. I move that we accept the minutes with minor, minor changes. Great job, Louise. Yes, great job, Louise. Fabulous job. Okay. Any okay. further discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Um, uh, me, I, Walter? Aye. Liz? Aye. Robin? Aye. Carolyn? Aye. Louise? Aye. Steve? Me? There you go. <laughs> All right, and that is that. Let me just save these. I'll post them later. Boom. Who's, who's second to the motion? I don't well, know. Well, Walter did. Walter. Okay. All right, so treasures report. I, we might actually have a treasures report. We do, kind of, I think. <laughs> ah, did we win the lottery? I, I did. Yes. Y you did, yeah. Yes. Please All proceed right. with the treasurer's report. All right, let's see. Um, let me just pull up the right tab. So for wetlands, we have uh, $11,091.97. For open space, we have $187,000, uh, I'm sorry, $187 and $51. Uh, wait, let me say that again. $187,051 and 77 cents. And then there's the budget. Yep. So the budget, I believe, so we have $2,000 for this fiscal year. So I believe we still have the full 2000. I don't think we've spent anything in it. Yes, we have, but I'm getting to that. Well, we'll get to that next. Next report, it'll show less than 2,000. So then there's also Berlin Farms. Uh, do we track that in the no. notes? No. no, 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 okay. There's no point because we never withdraw from it. It, it okay. requires a little bit of interest. We just need to report it like once a year or something. Okay, and then there's this general fund with 6750 in it. And I don't remember what that was, but I can look it up. Um, I think I saw it somewhere. I have no idea is what it, that is. $67? Yeah, it was 6750. Um I'd have to go back and look up what it was. Okay. Do you have a date on that? So the 6750? No. The, um, whole, the whole shebang. Oh, um that would be June 30th. Okay. This was the year end. <clears throat> Entertain a motion to accept the, do we have to vote on that thing? Nope. What? We, we just have to hear it? Yep. Correct. Robin, thank you. Yeah, thank no you, problem. Robin. No All problem. Right. Next on the agenda, bills and forms reimburse Leanne for postage. So this is actually the first successful time that I was able to use that new signy thingy, you know, <laughs> where I'm the authorized signer for expenditures. Oh. So it, it took me a couple of tries to get the paperwork right because I'm slow. Um, but anyway, so this is, I, we I, I approved a reimbursement for Leanne Lee here of $15.45 for postage. You know, she mailed out some uh, um, OC stuff. So I'm informing you of that. And then now it's official. No, I okay. think now we have to vote on it. I'm not oh, sure. that's right. I'm not what sure do we you say actually no? do. What do we say no? Then what do you do? Yeah, I don't think you actually do we have to send a on. bill to John. Which is oh, fine. that's more reason to vote no. You know, would you mute him, please? <laughs> <laughs> um, that the statutes in the other room, my, the other room is just too warm right now. The, um, I, I, I'm pretty sure all I have to do is report. Mm -hmm. um, hmm. If I mean, I think that 
if there was controversy, then we could do something. But if there's no controversy, I think I just have to report. But we can vote if you really want to. No, fine. What's the date on that, John? Or is there a date? Uh, yeah, July 27th. Okay. And Leanne got paid. It worked. Good. Ah. All right, and that was the we only bill. To vote on it. Don't you just have a limit, right? I, there's even, I, I don't even think it's supposed to be, I think we said a thousand dollars, it'll never get to oh, that. There's no right. way right. that I'm gonna sign for anything more than like probably $200, so whatever. It's really just for, you know, just so, you know, little stuff, anyway. All right, and that was it. Um, mail and notices, next on the agenda. They're actually, it's been pretty quiet mail wise. I mean, there were a couple of building permits that came up that I did a two, I did a couple of site visits. Um, neither of these turned into any kind of action on our part. Um, there's a barn being constructed on 245 River Road West. Um, it's outside the 200 foot riverfront area, but because of the slope, I commented that I, I, I was concerned about erosion. So, um, uh, it was Charles Freeman again. Um, and he's, he and the, and the property owner put down some straw wattles. And I went over there last Friday and checked them out and looked fine. And it's all, all the work is outside the 200 foot, foot river front, but they just, the, the boundary area they put in the straw wattle just to make sure, because it, you know, there, it does descend there. And then there's also somebody on Route 62. I don't remember the name of the road at this point. It's near Lincoln. Oh, yeah, it's Lincoln Road or Street? Louise. This road. Yeah, mm -hmm. corner of Lincoln and 62. Um, some somebody was putting at their new new to town and they wanted to put an above ground pool. And they, I just needed to make sure it was a hundred feet away from the wetlands. And then we they were eventually gonna put an in-ground pool. So we, you know, I just started a conversation when you want to do that, you know, get us involved so we can make sure, blah, blah, blah. They're very nice family. And that's it for that. Um, next up. You see, it's 725. Uh, we got five minutes. Um, wetlands issues. Let me uh, solar farm. Um, solar inspection report number 53. Um, uh, this was done on July 24th. Patrick Garner is only doing them every two weeks now because there's just not much going on anymore. Um, he actually noted that the site was 90% vegetated. Um, There's no new erosion or siltation. The lower southwest basin is now largely vegetated. The upper southeast basin shows similar gross termination. Um, so I, I can share pictures if anybody wants to see them. It, it, it looks better. They're weeds, but whatever. Um, so there's that. Um, next to Highland Ridge, um, there's been a number of inspections, including after that recent heavy rain, and everything looks good. You know, the roads, the, the paved, I don't know if anybody's been there, been by down there. Um, it's on one of my routes, so like I just I rode by it this morning. Um, I mean, they have a nicely paved road, the lower retention basins in place. Um, uh, Pat stopped by after the recent heavy rains and, and all is functioning properly. And, you know, they're, they're still removing stumps and stuff up, up on top and, but there's no, there are no concerns. So he, he's continuing to visit it weekly and also after rain, rain events. Okay. Can we go down there and take a look on that nicely paved road or do we need an appointment? You probably need an appointment. I don't think it'd be hard to get, you know, but I mean, it's still a construction area. So um, they, for legal reasons, probably just don't want people wandering around because if you get run over by something, then that'd yeah. be bad. How many houses is it gonna be? They're townhouses. Um, and I, I think it's 50-ish. There's some cutoff number that they're just underneath and I don't remember. 66. Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You are just a fount of information. Um, oh, oh, sure. 
So, some of it useful, some of it not. <laughs> some of it, well, no, I, I no, I think it's all useful. <laughs> so yeah, it's a, it's all, they're kind of townhouses this is for old people. It'll be beautiful up there. I mean, it, it was beautiful before, <laughs> but it's gonna be yeah. a nice place to live. Um, all right, so 728. We have Kyle and Scott on. Scott Goddard. Morrison? Goddard. Oh, Goddard. Scott Goddard or Scott Morrison? Uh, Goddard. Okay. Um, the Yeah, we're going to have to deal with the Hunt River Road thing afterwards. Um, the 28, 28 Oak Street, um, I just as a follow-up, I, um, I reached out to Dave Burke, who said they were going to who's going to try to contact them to see if they wanted to do like a COC and I haven't heard anything back yet. All right. So it's close enough. Um, all right. So we will, let me get my paperwork in order. So we will continue the hearing on the lot in question on Marlboro, corner of Marlboro Road and River Road. It now has a DEP number, uh, 107-0254. All right. Um, screen share. Can people see that? Yep. All right. Okay, so um, Kyle, do you want to start? Well, this is Scott. I think I'll I'll just run point on it. Uh, Scott okay. Goddard, Goddard Consulting, Wetlands Consultant, representing the applicant uh, on this project. Do you want me to screen share the site plan? I have a kind of a colored up site plan I could. Put I, up if it's there. better than the one I have, the, uh, the one I have is this one. That's the wetlands replication. That's the replication yep. And. That's that. That is, if it's better, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, it's more or less that, but just with some colored lines. So maybe I'll, maybe it's I'll. It's up to you. Uh, you I'll can screen share if you want. I'll give it a go. There we go. Okay. Is that visible to you with the color? Yes. Oh, yes. All righty. So this plan was like you said reviewed by DEP this was also presented at the to the commission at the last meeting in addition the commission hired Dave Burke as peer review there was a site inspection with Dave Burke this afternoon and there was a consensus on the accuracy of the wetland line there were no changes made I don't know if Dave reported that or something similar to the commission or if he's on the meeting tonight is Dave with he us? emailed me and a couple other people that the wetland flagging was accurate. Okay, good. So, so if that piece of it is behind us, then we can move forward to the project. The, the green line here is the BVW boundary right there. And then back over in here, the blue lines paralleling here represent an intermittent stream that runs through that, that wetland system. So the property is approximately two and a half acres with the largest portion of the usable upland set back to the rear of the property in here. That's where the house is proposed. Um, setting the house in this location was, uh, was discussed with the applicant and looked at from an engineering and practical perspective. Dur with, the, with the traffic situation on Marlboro and River Road, it just doesn't make sense to put the house in this location. In addition, there's a desire to, to have some accessory uses on the property. That's why we have this, um, this barn here shown for vehicular use in the, in the front portion. So the front area will be taken up by the stockpiling area, the proposed barn, the access roadway. And then in order to get the house set back from Marlboro Road and River Road, which is a busy intersection, uh, the house is proposed to be set back here. The crossing is relatively small in size. The stream crossing will meet the Massachusetts stream crossing standards and the replication as proposed on that detailed planting plan that you scan by will be in excess of the one-to-one -one mitigation required by the DEP. 
So it'll be a net gain of wetland resource areas on site. All the structures other than in the location of the crossing will respect the 25 foot buffer zone as uh, preferred by the Berlin Conservation Commission's policy. So um, yeah, I think the project with that is, is fairly straightforward. I think it meets the standards of the Wetland Protection Act. And I think it's something that um, we'd, we'd be happy to take questions on and, and discuss further the merits of the project. But it's something that I think the commission could issue an order of conditions on. All right, who wants to go first? <clears throat> Don't everybody jump at once. Well, I, I, you know my feeling, I talked about it the last time. We have a plan on file of a house uh, built on there that meets zoning and everything else that does not at all touch the wetlands. Um, this is part of a uh, subdivision before that, um, you know, we would hoodwinked on pretty badly up in the other off of uh, the other end of this lot. And then you come down here and this lot is set up and uh, it, it's a touch and go lot, but we had to approve the house that was on the south side of the screen at that particular time. So there is a legal lot there. And I don't think that um, with a self-inflicted hardship and everything else that we should be allowing any interference with the wetland whatsoever. I don't care whether it's replicated or not. As far as the traffic, uh, it isn't our job to mitigate traffic. Um, it's the homeowners or the builders or the lot configurers or whatever. And um, I would say that this plan is unacceptable simply because we have a plan that's been accepted that does not cross the wetlands. Yeah, Walt, I appreciate those comments and they're thoughtful and not um, insignificant. The, the response I would have to it would be, you know, so if you look at this green, this green line right here, which goes partly off site, it, this encompasses an upland island area of, of a fairly decent size. So the, the, if, if these lots were configured in any different way, there would not be access to this island from a different avenue that would not necessitate a wetland crossing. And if you look at the thickness of the wetland in here and the thickness of it over in here, it's a much, it would be a much more substantial crossing and where we've chosen the most narrow point, which is what the regs call for, to get access. Now, if a house, for, as in another example of, if a house was proposed here, right, there would be uh, an, a right, I believe, by the property owner to file for access to put, you know, maybe a pool or a tennis court or a bocce court or a horse paddock or something. I mean, I mean, there, there is the ability to get access to utilize this property. So whether a dwelling is here as a primary or here as a primary, and then here as secondary or here as secondary, uh, either way, it gets us across the, this narrow, narrow point uh, and all. And I think at the end of the day, this, this scenario does give long-term protection to that 25 foot buffer zone in the wetlands itself because of the way the backyard and this house is going to be configured you know it, it sort of faces this up, upland area and would minimize chances of sort of creep or encroachment by future homeowners that kind of thing so i think i think it makes sense to consider the development this way which is a preferable siting from a construction and house perspective whereas as this would be much more utilitarian of just plopping a structure up at the intersection of river and marlborough road which I think would have some uh, use, useful problems and some aesthetic problems and sizing problems to get that house in, in this location. And even at that, like I said, we would still propose to, to cross over here and come in here with some accessory uses. So I think that the applicant for sure would prefer to see a house in this location if in fact we meet all the standards for wetland protection, which I think we, we can do. Um, it's it's a bit of an exaggeration to call it an island. It's more like an atoll. 
I mean, it's really just two or three feet above the wetland. Um, when I say island, I mean we're surrounded I know. All by, by, by wetland. Yeah. Are they going to be able to put a, a basement in there? Yeah. The, the, um, the, if you look, Is it still pretty wet? It's it, a flat. Yeah, it's not, it's not some kind of mountain, and you, we do have to set the foundation, you know, above the groundwater table so that it's not a situation where you would have a wet basement per the mass building code. So you have to build that up. So you're bringing in some fill. Well, if you look at the, um, the grading on here, it's actually not very much grade change at all. We're, these contour lines are two foot contours and they're only, they're not even overlapping each other. So the, the grading work in the rear here, everything in the front at grade and the back here is built up no greater than two feet in any spot. Right, but you said, so, yes, you, you are but if you're gonna build up the, um, if you're going to build up the uh, foundation, that requires building fill around it. Is that correct? I, again, only only small only small amounts. The 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 front the front here is all right at, right at um, right at grade. You just would dig dig down your foundation, and you'd have your your uh, retaining wall around the front. And right here, you have a contour line where you pull this two thirty four off, and then again right in the back here and here. And all we're doing is smoothing out those grades. So. The, the fill situation would be would be fairly minimal. All this is sub two feet modifications in the rear. I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, I'm sort of picturing that road, that place on uh, on Crosby. Because hmm. um, it, it's just, it's a pretty flat piece of land. And I, I can't imagine that the water table is that deep, but I don't know. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I, I, I think we, I really want to stick with the crossing. Um, as okay. Far as whether, you know, putting the house there and that's the ideal place, as uh, Scott pointed out, structurally and everything else. Well, that's good for the builder. We're here to protect the wetland. Um, if you put a house in a sewerage system, I can see having to cross a wetland, and we've set a precedent with that off of Lyman Road, uh, to put in a leach field. Um, that's one thing. But to say that, well, we can get access anyway because we won't put on bocce court. Not so. We're the conservation commission. This isn't Hudson, it's not Marlboro, it's not Northborough, not Shrewsbury or whatever. We have done a good job in Berlin at protecting wetlands. And I say we do it here. This starting from, from base here, it's a self-inflicted hardship, the subdivision of that big lot originally. Um, all the way through, it's been a bad thing for Berlin. This is what's left over. It is not our fault that that was designed that way. That's what they've got. I say they can build on it and get their monies back out of it. And um, that's what it should be, build down on the south of the, south of the uh, wetlands. It's not my problem. The wetlands is my problem. Do you want to comment, Walter, then about um, running a sewer line through the wetlands? Um, the sewer line is not going to go through. Is, yeah, well, I don't want to see a wet, the sewer line coming down through there. But again, the question has been set on that. If you put the house in there, I suppose the sewer line has to go out. I say the house doesn't go in there. So you don't have to have a sewer line crossing the wetland. You keep the house on the south side of the wetland, and they you know, somehow without consulting us, the town of Hudson allowed a hookup. And uh, so at this point, it's a little late to stop it. I tried. And um, so I say, let them just totally ignore this plan. It's unacceptable because we have a plan on file accepted where a house can be built on that lot and it doesn't interfere with the wetlands whatsoever. Do we have a copy of that plan? Yeah, I got it right in front of me. It's kind of hard. I can't show it to you right now, but. Oh, okay. Because my concern, this is a, what, the third time in six years that somebody's come forward with a plan for this lot? Yeah. Is that right? Well, yes and no. So the first one was back t um, about at least ten, about 10 years ago, but it was really for more, the, the, the lot, it was, it was really the focus at that point was on Dudley. Um, it was really the second plan where the focus is on this area, and that's where they had the plan for the house right at the corner. 
um, the first one, it, it was really more of a focus about uh, some structure up on off of Dudley Road, which is sort of, you know, on the other side there, up. So this parcel strikes me as the type that if, if we don't, you know, approve this plan, somebody, some developer is going to come in with deep pockets and they're going to fight it and they're going to put up garbage there. And as a, you know, I don't know, you know, as a, somebody who lives up the street, I don't want to, you know, I get Walter's concern with the wetland crossing, but I also don't want to see just some crappy house thrown up on that corner. So, I mean, I think in, in the interest of keeping Berlin, Berlin, as you know, we've talked about, do we really want to just have something thrown up on the corner of that intersection? I, I think that you're mischaracterizing it, um, Robin. Uh, there are a lot of nice, neat little houses. And in fact, it'd be nice if there were a few more around instead of these McMansions that have been thrown up in town, thrown up. Um, and again, the Berlin is the, where our Berlin is the wetlands and the woodlands, not fancy houses. Uh, you go to Marlboro or Northboro if you want that type of stuff. This is a nice wildlife habitat. It's woodland. It's a um, pretty sizable area and we shouldn't be allowing the house in there. And once again, it's self-inflicted. This was one big lot with three lots. They already uh, hoodwinked the town enough. If the planning board had been on the ball and had the board of health look at the, at the uh, cesspool of the original house, that other house never would have been built. The owner has profited immeasurably from uh, pulling, you know, being a little cute on how they did things. And then finally, they come down, this is the leftover land, and they want to do their best to squeeze everything they can out of it. And I think our, our objective is to um, say no and let them put up a cute little house on that corner that meets the wetlands and does not interfere with the wetlands. So what are we going to do? So if we deny this and they don't take it to the DEP. What are we going to do when the next person comes along with a worse plan and then they get their attorneys involved and take it to the DEP? Wait, wait, you know, Robin, I've heard that through my 40 years in office. Oh, we're going to get sold. Oh, somebody with deep pockets. It, it, it more often doesn't happen. You're imagining something that isn't the case. If they come back, we fight them. I don't think you turn tail and run out of anticipating that somebody's going to get tough with us. That's where you lose all the time. I've never done that. John. Um, I, I, um, the DEP did comment, have some comments. Um, let me, I could, well, let me read them to you since we're looking at a different Real screen. quick, John, do uh, Steve Savoy or Craig need to be involved in this conversation? They're um, attendees right now. Are they related to this? I, believe they own the property the the, the person who su originally subdivided this property is not the current owner okay because there's two people in the and i i believe that they are i scott i believe scott savoy has something to do with the ownership of the property um and who's the other person craig it just has a first name oh yeah that, that's the applicant and the builder Correct. okay I'll promote them so they can talk. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, and I, I would like to say something before we go too far also. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so there's a couple of things that I would like to see done on the plans um, before we even come close to voting. I would like to see um, better detail about the where the sewage line will cross the wetlands. Um, how, I want to know how they're doing it. I want to know about site, about storage of um, fill on the property. So there, there are some things that I would like to see on the plans before we even come close to voting one way or another. And by asking for these things, I'm not saying that I plan on voting to approve it or disapprove. But if we do approve a plan, I this needs some more information for me to feel comfortable even voting one way or another. Mr. Chairman. Wait, Liz, Liz, Liz had her hand up first there, Walter. 
Uh, and question, I see the sewer line, the water line's gonna have to cross too. Where's the water line? Uh, yeah, the water line is shown in the plan as well. This, this dashed line here with the W on it. Oh. Yeah, it's hard for us to see, Scott. Yeah. So we have water, it's sewer, and electric all crossing okay. on the bridge. Digital plans are challenging. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, so Walter? they're also getting town water from Hudson? Yes. Oh, okay. So Walter, you wanted to say something? Yeah, um, Carolyn, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but by asking for that, you're simply playing into their hands. The issue is here that there's a an approved plan that doesn't even touch the wetlands. You but I'm not. We, you know what we've been through on all uh, of this lot. Absolutely. And I say, I go, it, you know, this whether it's water or sewer run, runs under there, if the road goes through, the other stuff is easy to do. The issue is whether we're going to allow that crossing. And I don't think we should. But even if we don't, does even if we don't, it doesn't mean that it's not going to get going to get built. And the set of plans that goes before the the building inspector, I would like to be more detailed. If we say no to this, it isn't going to get built. Why do you say that, Walter? I, I, right? How do, how does that work? How does that work, Walter? We're the conservation commission. We they're going to appeal it across it. They're going to appeal it. So what? And then it'll get approved in out of our hands. Wait, wait. wait. What are we? Or doing? if it what gets am approved. What I hearing here? Are we a conservation commission interested in protecting wetlands? And, of course and we are. Wilderness or aren't we? Are, are you, are you actually, Walter? Walter, back down. Are, Walter. are you protecting the wet? Are you protecting the wetlands in in in, in inhibiting me from using my property? I mean, we're we're re replicating at 1.5%. One, you know, we're giving you one and a half times the amount of wetlands. So, in, in essence, by approving the plan, you're protecting the wetlands and allowing me to use my property. Listen, every time we we turn down something, it's it's a um, it stops somebody from doing something on their property. Just like me, I've got six acres of land, half it's wetland. Uh, there's no way I could build on it. If I wanted to do something, put a leach field, the Conservation Commission would have to say no. That would be prohibiting me from doing something. This doesn't prohibit you from using your property. You can well, put a well, house actually, on it, you it can live it on it, me. you can cut it, wood on it. You've got plenty of use of that property without filling in a wetlands. Crossing I'm, not filling in, I'm not filling in a wetlands. I'm actually increasing the percentage of wetlands by 50%. As I, as I build a home for me and my family. You're changing a wetland. The wetland, the natural wetland is like it's been since time immemorial. And you're gonna have to do some digging and gouging and pouring concrete, and it isn't gonna be a natural area any longer. It's a wetland and we should be protecting it. Well, one of the ways that you protect, I have to agree with um, Craig on this, uh, that one of the one, one of the ways you do protect a wetland is you build in those protections with a well thought out um, development scheme and land use scheme, right? So if this year, if we were to somehow memorialize the boundaries of our yard and it gets recorded onto a site plan, you know, this plan becomes a plan of record of what was built there, and then we know that's the limit. That's the that's the extent of what it's going to be. We're not going to come back, you know, three more times with now we want to put a tennis court. Now we want a pool. Now we want the, this. This will be the development as approved by the Conservation Commission. The limits of the yard will be the limits of the yard. And the rest of the open space, including the entirety of the 25 foot buffer zone, other than the crossing, will be protected in perpetuity. You know, we're not proposing work within that 25 foot zone. You know, the commission, you know, I mean, look, I, I, we, we don't want to have to go kind of go the DEP route and then change the plan and all the other stuff that goes along with that. But you know, I think this is a, a thoughtful plan. I think, Craig, would it, could, it, could you maybe sort of just tell the commission- Whoa, 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 whoa. stop, stop, stop. Scott, you can't. Oh, sorry. Mr. I Chairman. have to, yeah, people have to now ask for permission. There's too I, many people talking at once. Mr. Chairman. Um, um, yeah, fine, fine, fine. Stop, 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 stop. Yes. As I, I, do, I do want to first, before we have more discussion, I do want to read the DEP comments. Yes. Um, 
technical comments. Two previous SFH projects have been approved on this lot that were filed and approved without B BWV impacts or stream crossing. The commission may also want to consider uh, 105.54B, the issuing authority may issue as OC permitting work and the exercise of this discretion, the issuing authority shall consider the magnitude of the alteration and the significance of this project site to the interests identified in the Wetlands Protection Act, the extent to which this adverse impact can be avoided, the extent to which adverse impacts can be minimized. So, um, the, I mean, it was interesting, their uh, comments somewhat indicating that they, you know, um, could perhaps be um, willing to not have it overturned if we were to deny the project, but it's hard to know with DEP. All right, now, um, again, who, so just John to go, clarify go, that. Please, go ahead, go ahead. Let me, but let me, let me identify who will speak, then you speak. So, Walter, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I did. So, did I? I heard when you were reading it, what I heard, I think you said, is that EEP suggests that they may not overturn it if we deny this because they already have on file uh, plans that they can build on it. Right. Suggest is too strong a word. I think there's a vague implication is a better way of putting it. Um, I, I, I wouldn't be that sure that they wouldn't overturn it. Um, and part of the reason I say that it is, you know, as we discussed last meeting, it is a pretty well thought out plan. I mean, they, they did put a lot of, you know, there's, you know, it's, they did a good job with the plan. Um, Liz, you had a comment. I do. Um, so I found the, the fill question the answer to the fill question, very evasive. I'd like to know how many loads are going back there. I'm gonna vote against this. And I just wanna know, it's not that we're gonna lose any goodwill with DEP if we vote against this, right? Right. No, that's never an issue. Good. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so uh, Louise, are you raising your hand? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, I have some concerns and um, I'd like to say to Craig that this is a, probably a difficult decision because I respect your right to use your land. However, um, originally when this land was subdivided, the former owner came to the Conservation Commission and was told that because of the, the wetlands, he could only have one more house lot on that property. Somehow or other, he managed to work things out. All right, so we got approval. He subdivided into two lots. He got approval to build on, on one of the lots. And this was left over. And then he came back and says, okay, I've got this lot. I want to build on it. And you know, we originally told him that really because of all the wetlands, he could only have one lot there. So I feel like we should turn it down. Um, okay, who else has a comment? Now, Scott, you were trying to prompt Craig to talk about something? Well, I was, uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I think um, Mr. Womble might be, it might help uh, the commission understand the type of house he's intending to put here, maybe what it would look like and what kind of, you know, there was discussion about whether it'd be appropriate to have a, a, a type of a house, what that would look like up in the corner versus what this house would look like. So if it would please the chairman, maybe you could uh, ask Craig if he would like to share about. Sure. Mr. The, Chair, uh, Mr. Chairman, listen, I, I, I want to record, no, I object to this. I don't care whether it's a castle or what it is. We're talking about wetlands here. We're not city planners. We're not architects. We're not the historical society. <clears throat> it doesn't matter. Hey, Walter. Here, with, with all Walter, due respect, Wal 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 with all due respect stop, to stop, you, stop, stop, everybody, stop, time, stop, I am as much a, stop, a resident stop. of the town of Berlin. Craig, as Craig, I, as stop. Walter, you know, I, I, just, well, I just Craig, find it offensive Craig. that this guy can run you, rough shot over everybody who Robin, may be a resident of the town. Craig, if you don't Just stop, I'm going to have to mute else. you. Shut it. Shut it down. Now, Walter, I hear what you're saying. I still want to hear what Craig has to say. Okay? I'm the chair, and I, still, I, and I want to hear what Craig has to say about this. Now, 
Okay. Now, Craig, I'd like to hear what you have to say about this, the, the comment that Scott made, but please remain civil. Okay. Well, I, 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 I find myself completely civil. I, on the other hand, Mr. Chairman, find Walter to be absolutely unapproachable. I mean, to have a board member whose sitting position is, I will go to the town of Hudson, I will shut you down as a private citizen, regardless of my position on this board. I will go to a, a third party who may be an engineer who, who acts as a, as a surrogate for, for the town. I will speak to them off the record. I, I find it reprehensible, frankly, as a taxpayer of, of, of Berlin. I mean, I spend $12,000 a year right now in town on my taxes. I'm just as much a resident as Walter. I'm sorry, I'm not as old as you, although I'm getting there, okay? Craig, but, the, Craig, but the point Craig, is, Craig, Craig, I have Craig, just as much Craig, right to representation and to use my property as you do, sir, okay? Okay, I, Craig. I, I'm sorry, I, I, I think that this is, this is horrible, that, that we're being presented with the, 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 uh, the position that no wetlands, no matter what, will ever be crossed as long as Walter sits on the board. That's right. It's horrible. That's been... Okay. It's horrible. Did you, I mean, you... I'm trying to present a, a, a plan for my family to live on this piece of property. Mm -hmm. I can build a barn on one side. I can put a beautiful home there. I will continue to be a now, taxpayer Chairman, and a resident. You're jumping all yeah. over me. Uh, shut this right. guy yeah. down, will you? Uh, Walter, give right me a yeah, Craig. You were specifically asked a question. I'm about... going to build a single family home, okay, a, a, a ranch style home that my wife and I can age in place right there in Berlin, Massachusetts. I want to have a barn up close to the, to the road, but I don't want to live right there at a, at a crossroads, you know, 40 feet from, from two very busy roads and a commuter rail. The, the land is two and a half acres. I've purchased two and a half acres. I have a beautiful uplands area that I can access and I can mitigate all of the effect of any wetlands crossing one and a half times by doing, by doing just exactly what we've done on this plan. It's a beautiful plan and it's an addition to the community. It's not a, and, I, and again, I, I'll reiterate, I am a resident of Berlin. I'm not some outsider walking in saying, I want to develop a hundred acres in your town. And I, I, I'm sorry, I just, I, I really, I feel like the board is, is being disserved and, I, and I, I, I think that needs to be addressed. All right, thank That's you. That's all I have to say. Thank you. I have a question for Scott Goddard. Yes, sir. Um, about the area down here on your plan around uh, uh, site for, um, for the, Dirt, uh, what do you call it? Um, containment Stock area. Up. Yes. Right there. Yeah. The stockpile. Now, is that good? Now that's a pretty narrow spot. Is that going to be a sufficient? Uh, is that going to be large enough for the stockpile? Well, the stockpile is shown here, outside of the hundred foot buffer zone, and this is largely an import situation, right? So there'll be some excavation for the foundation and that will be used on site. So there's not going to be a huge amount of need to stockpile mountains of material on the site. So we kept it outside of the 100 foot buffer zone uh, in this particular case and then used the access point along the driveway for the store construction materials, st temporary storage. Uh, so I, I think the pile location is appropriate. Is the size appropriate? Yeah, because I think we're going, we're, we're, we're going to be excavating for our foundation that a lot of the spoils from that material will be used to fill in here in and around the small retaining wall and then spread it around and around the back of the property. So yeah, I think the size is appropriate. All right. Thank you. Um, I have, so I have a question based on comments Carolyn made. Um, Carolyn, you were implying that we need more time on this. Do we need more time on this or should we uh, bring this hearing to an end. I think there are, first of all, now that it's my turn to speak, um, I do not believe that Walter is the only person who feels the way he does about this lot, and I don't think he should have to take all the heat on this one. Um, this lot has been newly purchased, so it's not like it has been 
who the when it was purchased it wasn't like there were known issues there is plenty of other land for sale in berlin um kind of going back to walter's self-imposed hardship uh as far as needing more time i need more information as part of this plan so i would be happy to discuss the information that i would like to have them present present to us and we would need more time they would need time to get that information so i believe so I that we would need more information so mr chairman we'd be happy to um request a continuation at the conclusion of this discussion to supply supplemental information so the commission has all of the information they could need which would include some more details about the, the sewer line design the connections to the bridge etc and the the fill piles is what i what i heard so far um, um, one of the other things that i would like to see in writing is the sequence of construction events mm -hmm. um because it's going to have to be logged, therefore, pro uh, possibly construction equipment will be in the wetlands. I want to know how that's going to be mitigated. Um, and like I said, the sequence of construction events and what will be done to protect the wetlands that aren't being disturbed during the construction process. Okay. Uh and Mr. Chairman, if I could respond to that, I, yes, I also, please. yeah, I, I, I like the idea of, of um, you know, pr, uh, you know, dem demonstrating that we're preserving some, some buffer zones around this property. So maybe we could include some, some demarcations to make sure that 25 foot stays intact. You know, at, at the DEP level, the opportunity isn't there to, to protect that 25 foot zone like we can, like we can do now. So I, I think the best way for us to get the long-term protection, because there is the ability to use that island, I believe. And I'll call it an island for lack of a better term to choose at the moment. But um, wh whether it's used for this or for something else, that, that is land that has the right to be accessed and, and utilized in a way that minimizes impacts to wetlands. And in this case, fully mitigates those impacts. Um, so, but, uh, but well, I'll, I'll consider uh, you know, showing something uh, for long-term demarcation of that 25 foot zone. Okay. So um, would the commission be agreeable to um, extending this hearing until the next meeting? Scott, you need two weeks? Yes. Chairman? Y yes, Walter? Um, again, you're extending it if you, share my view that this lot is usable it's a very poor lot um we knew that when the original owner this is the typical thing to happen the original owner then sells it to someone else and and we're supposed to feel sorry we i've been through this many times before burl if there were many times i've dealt with issues like this and again in my own property there is areas i could use but i can't get to them it, uh, it, it, I have a very humble little house myself, so I'm not worried about someone else having to live in a little humble house. Uh, but we shouldn't allow, when, when, when it isn't necessary, to cross a wetlands. And this, uh, somebody saying, well, we can cross it anyway for logging in a, in a bocce court. Not necessarily. We've never done that in Berlin. Again, this is Berlin. And our reputation is very important that people know that they used to know that now they think we're pushovers. Uh, this um, well, should not cross the wetland when it doesn't have to cross it in order to provide a home on that land. So what I'm inferring is that you're not in favor of extending the hearing. I am not in favor of it. All right. So I'd like to, since they're one and four and one against so far, I'd like to have a vote about whether we'd like to extend the hearing. Um, I'll start with myself. Uh, an I vote means yes, you extend the hearing. Um, John, I. Walter? No. Robin? I. Farrellyn? I. Louise? I. Steve? I. Liz? I, and can I add that the fill is important to me? I yes, still want can. an answer on how many truckloads. 
Okay. Understood. So Scott, um, we'll accept your request to extend the hearing until next meeting, which is two weeks from today. Does um, it, it, how, how are we going to get to Scott what additional information we want other than just the few things that I've mentioned? I think you would be an excellent point person, Carolyn. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> uh, I'll, email, I'll email you the supplemental information prior to the next hearing. Okay, thanks. I believe I have Carolyn's email, so. I believe you do. All right, good. So we will um, bring this part of the discussion to a close and um, thank you everybody. And John, if you're able to get a, a somehow get us a picture of that other plan, I'd like to see that at some point. The the one that shows the house, the old plan that shows the house on the other side of the wetland. It, you know, is it possible to take a picture of it or? Well, the, the iPhone pictures of those plans suck. I've tried that before. Okay. Um, and it's I don't have I mean I have a a scanner, but it's not that big. I don't know if anybody has a large scanner. Um, nah, don't worry about it. It's, Don't worry about it. I mean, I could try to take, I'll do my best and send it around. Um, yeah, if you could just take a quick picture and. Yeah, I mean, I, I have, like I said, I have a copier, uh, you know, but it's just, you know, it's a small desktop copier. Yeah, yeah, John, I'd like to have it. I'd like to have a copy of that. Sure. Yeah, um, we'll do. Got to have it. All right. Thank you, everybody. Um, and we will, so uh, Robin, you will demote all those people. Have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, have a good night, everybody. Good night. And we will move on to the next issue in the agenda. All right, we're gonna round back to 100 River Road, uh, the enforcement order on, under wetlands. Um, so as everybody I think has been informed, um, the owner of the property fired his lawyer. Um, and you know, I'm not really, you know, I, I, so there really hasn't been any movement. Um, certainly, you know, we haven't been presented with any, <laughs> they asked for an extension for three weeks and the, the, the time's up and we haven't, I haven't received an NOI um, because I don't think there's anybody working on it. Dave um, told me today that um, they are still going to have the property survey, that he's still meeting the surveyor over there. Okay. So um, it's not totally dead in the water, but I think that we should, um, I am not entirely sure the, um, the sequence, like how, how to really go about doing this, but I would like the enforcement order put on the, um, on the deed at the registry of deeds. So you would, you would ask the lawyer about that did he get to that before he got fired? He did not. He told me that um, he, as part of his understanding of being the proponent's attorney, that that was not something he was required to do. Um, because it's not like the NOI where it has that additional piece of paper that says this must be registered at the Registry of Deeds, as far as I'm aware. So how do we do this? I'm not entirely sure, but I feel like it's very important that it gets done. I don't know if we talk to Margaret. I don't know if we get permission to talk to town council and find out how to do it. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Walter. I, um, DEP has been copied on the enforcement order, correct? Yeah, I believe so. Yes. Well, I no, no. Yes, absolutely. I sent them one. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, at this point, um, a phone call to them and having a discussion about this and seeing which way to go from here sure. might be yeah. in order. And in fact, they might take it over, which will, I'd be perfectly happy with um, and let them go. And they could issue fines in addition to it. We can't issue fines. Uh, I turned one over to DEP uh, 15 years ago or so up off uh, Lancaster Road, they fined them $20,000, uh, which we couldn't have done. It was a flagrant uh, wetlands violation, just like That's this. That's a lot of beer money. I drink. Um, I, I can, 
so um, I'll, I could, so the circuit writer is Kim Roth and I can email her this. Um, I, it's gonna be very difficult for me, for me over the next 48 hours to have a phone call with her, although I could try. Well, um, give me your phone number. Mm -hmm. I found the issue. I'll have a discussion with her and see what it is. All right. Wait a sec. You gotta have a, get yourself a pencil while I look it up. I've got it. Okay. So um, 508 767 2711. And again, her name is Kimberly Roth. She's our circuit writer. I've met her once. She seemed very pleasant. Roth. R-O-T-H. Um, her, her email is Kimberly.roth at mass.gov. K yeah, dot Roth at, at mass.gov? Yes. M-A-S-S. -S. Correct. M-A-S-S -S dot gov. Um, um, I'm just going to forward you this um, unrelated email, Walter. Um, it's just so you also have it on your email account. Okay, so the, the email I'm forwarding you has nothing to do with any of this, mm -hmm. but at least you'll have the contact information. Okay? Okay. All right. Good. Okay, back to the agenda. Um, Just on that, by the way, a, yeah. a realtor called me the other day um, wanting to know about the other lot there that the barn is on at 100 River Road. He has a client that wants to buy it and use it to uh, basically what it's used for, storing construction equipment and, and uh, materials and stuff like that. Just heads up on that. I don't know. He wanted to know if this enforcement order impacted that lot. I don't think it did. It does. Anyway, just for your information. Okay. All right, where was I? Um, we are moving on to new business. A, request for COC 276 West Street, DEP 107-0253. Um, Robin, is Scott Morrison around? No. Yeah, he, he had warned us that he's was double booked and but it and i and walt and i told him he, it's really not crucial that he is there oh, so i received a, a written request for um a coc on the property 276 west street um i requested a site visit which occurred last wednesday at 8 a.m um and walt and i were both there um and you want to talk about the what you saw walter yeah um you know, first of all, is there a DEP number on 100 River Road yet? Uh, let, let me check. If there is, email it to me or something. If, uh... Well, I'll be able to tell you. No, because there's no filing yet, right? Yeah, there's no filing. It's just an enforcement order. That's right. I don't oh, right, right. Excuse yeah. me. That's right. Yeah. Very good, Carol. Yeah, I was Didn't trying we... to write on the ball. Didn't we say that was 0254? No, no, 100 yeah. River, the enforcement order, Spooky Farm enforcement order. There's no, oh, there's yeah. no DEP because there's no oh, NOI. Yeah, that's right. What am I thinking? Um, uh, I, I put, made a note earlier that we had 0254 as 100 River Road. Is that? That's the other River Road. That, that's, that's the Marlboro oh, okay. Road. Okay. Um, um, well, anyway, right. we yeah, can get what, it. And um, it's River Road and Marlboro Road. It, 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 gotcha. um, the owners and the, and the people that cleaned it up, uh, I think, we're kind of smart to wait a while. So all the vegetation grew up. You can't really, we couldn't really see the land. Uh, the vegetation was 18 inches high or so. And, uh, and also, um, I'll take the blame for not having, keeping my finger on it and stopping in and looking at it while they were doing the work, which I should have done. Um, so I, we talked about it a little bit. They planted some trees out back where they had cleared the land and with respect to that, uh, and I pointed this out to John, first of all, the deer are eating the growth in the trees as quick as it's growing, but the bittersweet is just exploding out of the ground. I suspect that what they cleared out there was a horrid invasive species cluster. And no matter what happens now, within 
you know, by the time the end of summer comes, the trees that they planted are going to be enveloped and, you know, smothered out. Uh, as far as the repairing and digging out what they put in the wetlands, it appears that they took out quite a bit of it. And at this point, um, I'd say it was good enough that, uh, you know, to go back and try and tell them to come back two years and make sure the trees are growing. The trees won't be growing. They'll be dead. Yeah, let me comment on that. Um, so my observations, you know, they, they clearly had graded some land away from the house. Um, essentially, you know, uh, Scott Morrison's supposition was that they, the grading was done largely to help with water flow so that water didn't pool in the driveway. Um, and they just move the dirt into the wetlands. That, that soil has all been removed from the wetlands to the side of the house. And as, as uh, Walter met, mentioned, they had planted some trees out back. Um, so the, um, you know, the, the site looked good. What Walter's referring to is that MACC often recommends that um, you know, when there's plantings that we keep an eye on it for a couple of years to make sure the plantings come in. And he pointed out while we were there, because I pointed that out to Scott, um, Walter pointed out that it's it's actually not that crucial because of the general terrain there and the uh, and the flora, which is, includes a lot of it. So he and I were both comfortable at this point with issuing a um, COC. The issue, the, the the reason why, you know, Scott is uh, uh, the the owner wants to get the COC is the, the land's for sale and there's an offer on the house. Um, so they, they sort of want to get this tied off. And, and given the scope of this project um, and that the work they did, both Walter and I felt that it was appropriate. Um, uh, questions? Uh, entertain a motion to approve the COC? So moved. Is there a second? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, any further comment? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, and uh, so we'll vote. Um, I'll start with me. I, Walter. Aye. Robin. Aye. Carolyn. Aye. Louise. Aye. Steve. Me. Uh, Liz. Aye. Okay. Great. So it's passed. Um, I, I sometime this either Friday evening or this weekend, I'll ride around and get signatures. Um, it's good though. I can kind of hit up Robin and Carolyn around the same time. I have That's to work good. on Saturday, so. Oh, shit. Well, maybe so. Yeah, and I won't be around this this weekend. Uh, how about Friday? Uh, I should be around Friday, at least until four. This is, and then Liz, you live right down the street, so I, if I get four, we're good. Um, Steve's the longest drive, a pain in the ass. I know, right? I know, oh, Berlin's so that, long. That side of town. It takes so long to get across Berlin. I know. I, it's, wow. And actually, he's much. pretty close to Louise, so. Right. Yeah, yeah, so I'll be around this weekend. And okay. I'll wear my mask. So you can I'm see. around Friday. Saturday, All right. All Sunday, right. Well, tomorrow. I'll deal with it on Friday. I already got it printed up. It's already set, so I just got to. Wow. Um, Those Audis have trouble getting across town. Ooh. Ooh. Up the big hill. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> New business. Next, uh, B, incursion in, onto conservation land by residents of 7 Buffton Farm Road, Clinton. So um, let me just give a preamble, then Walter will give a discussion. Um, there, apparently, there's this place called anonymous at anonymous.com where you can send anonymous emails. So I got an anonymous email from the, the conservation you know, account did that there was an, you know, somebody intruding, building something onto conservation land. Send me that link. I'll send you some. <laughs> so, um, be great. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I sent this around, what to do, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then Walter had this, the idea of just going up and knocking on the front door, which he did. So, Walter? Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you go into something like this, I had the idea, who's this wise guy? You know, you have a problem. Well, she's the nicest person you ever want to meet. And, um, just obsessed with keeping the yard neat in the neighborhood and everything else. And what they've done back there is, um, which I did on conservation land behind my house 30 years ago, is clear out some multi-floor rows and bittersweet and clean the mess up and planted a few flowers. But 
recently, and it's been very recently, they also built this about a 12 by 12 deck. And I think they, I assume they probably just want to put a screen house on it or something. So they sit out there. But anyway, the back lot line there from the back of the house to the town line is 31 feet. The a distance from the back of the house to the front of this um, platform is 40 feet. So they're, they're 10 feet into Berlin conservation land before they even started building. So um, obviously we've got to send a letter over there and, and um, tell it. I, I, was, I was pretty firm. Well, I wasn't firm. I was just explaining to the facts of life that uh, looking at removing some invasive species or something is one thing, but constructing something on town land, we just can't accept. So she's expecting, she'll be expecting us to um, notify her that that has to be moved off of Berlin town land, uh, conservation land. There's, what are we looking at? Platform? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead, Steve. Are we looking at a platform on cinder blocks or are we actually looking at a footing? No, no, there's no, no, it's probably on cinder blocks. I, you know, it's plywood and I imagine it's PT lumber underneath it. And uh, it's, it's pretty basic. It's uh, so something very simple to move. Yeah. I, they could probably have got enough people to pick it up and move it out of there. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, there's, there is a further complication. Um, as I'll discuss a little bit later for, um, I met with uh, Rebecca Longville and Dan Stimson today. Um, and there's actually also some sort of other res building restriction along the line. So they may, they may not be able to put anything there, but that's really up to Clinton. That's not up to Berlin. Right. So, you know, the issue is, you know, there, there's two things. It's on conservation land, but it's also on town land. So, um, you know, you know, the question is who exactly does this letter come from? Um, I mean, I, we could, I could certainly write up a letter and send it out. Um, but I, I may also ask Margaret, just because, you know, you, even if it wasn't conservation land, they still can't build on private property, <laughs> still town land. Yeah, that's um, good thinking, John. I um, agree. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Margaret about like what this is, because I mean, you know, they, she may want a, a firmer letter coming from somebody else, because it really, you know, regardless of whether it's conservation land, it's private property. She's building on somebody else's land. All right, so I will follow up with Margaret and, and depending on that, send out a letter. Um, uh, and do you guys want to read the letter first? Or you want me to just send it out? I was going to use crayons. On if the color. town is, if it's coming from the selectman, select board or whoever the appropriate board is, or town administrator, um, you know, we should get a copy anyway, but um, I get it sent out. But I have Dora's uh, contact information. I Go ahead. Yeah, well, really, it, it's uh, here? what John, what do you want to put this on her information, her contact information on? Uh, okay, YouTube? good, right. It, it, Walter, why don't you just email that to me? Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Carolyn. You're welcome. Right. Boy, you are awake tonight. Carolyn. I know, <laughs> you are. snorting coffee beans. All right, <laughs> um, next on the agenda. Um, ba, 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 C, ATV use on 40 Caves area. So this is why I was meeting with um, Dan Stimson, and Rebecca Longo. So Rebecca is a conservation agent in Bolton, but also lives in Clinton and is on the Conservation Commission of Clinton. Oh. So yes. Um, and then someone in, you know, there's some people that have been contacting SVT about ATV use on 40 Caves. So Dan asked me and Rebecca to meet with him um, and I mean, he might have asked some other people too, but I, I think he asked Walter too, but whatever, whatever. Um, and so we, we parked on the Francis street entrance, which is in Clinton and walked, walked a lot of the 40 caves area. There are clearly ATVs being used, um, on the land. I mean, you could see the tire tracks, you know, ATVs and dirt bikes. There's witnesses of this happening. We, um, there's also something else, um, the, uh, another, you know, the, there's a, um, a lot of the area over there are actually, they're, they're cart paths, they're roads, you know, um, before the land became conservation land, um, you know, there, there was, there was a mink farm and there were other stuff. There are just roads in there. There's farm roads in there and they still look like farm roads. 
um, the um, there is a house in Clinton that backs up to one area of one of these farm roads, and it looks like they've been going in there with some kind something larger than an ATV and getting rocks from an old like quarry area. There's there's a couple of areas where it looked like there's some rocks that were tossed up from a quarry, and they've been like getting them and and right using them for other purposes. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So there's a. Um, and we saw some other areas where it looked like their ATV access. Dan had three signs with them, which we put up, you know, no motorized vehicles per order of Berlin Conservation Commission. Um, he expects they'll be torn down. Um, the, what he wanted me to ask you, Walter, though, is he, you would imply that you had some connections with the environmental police. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Correct. Because, you know, uh, what Dan Stimson's point of view is, is really this, this the environmental police need to get involved. It's, it's really, so oh, yeah. um, Rebecca is going to work with the Clinton Conservation Commission to send out a letter to all the abutters around there saying, you know, no ATVs. Um, as best we could ask, well, it, does, did, it did not appear that there was ATVs coming off of Clinton with perhaps one exception, which I'll get to in a minute. But, it, but anyway, you know, she's going to write up a letter. I may just rip off the letter and send it to some of the abutters around the 40 caves area too. Um, but he thinks, Dan thinks that the only way to really crack down on this is with the environmental police. And he was wondering if you had some contact information there, Walter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as you're talking, of course, I also think at the entrances, we ought to, we need to gate up entrances on something larger than a he, he had a thought about that, which is that, you know, his concern about that based on experience with other areas is that they just drive around them. Yeah, they right. just cut down some trees and drive around the fence. When I was looking at this um, Buffton Road situation, one of the neighbors told, I, I asked one of the neighbors about ATVs and he said that the, they enter from Buffton Road. There is an entrance into yep. the conservation land from Buffton Road and yep. he says the kids on bikes go in and out of there quite yep. often. Yep. So that's one entryway. Yep, we but, found uh, it. Yeah, I mean, I thought the Clinton uh, agent did contact the environmental police. You said that last time, but I can I can contact them. Would you? Yeah. All right. All right. And and then like let would you keep both myself and Dan Stimson updated? Oh, uh, D sure. Dan's actually the best the best organizer around this thing because it, it does cross across two towns yeah and SVDs and Bolton involved with both um yeah I mean because it, it's it's they're in there a lot it's you could see they, you know there's one area where there's some like little um drops and rises and you can tell they just zoom, zooming around in there quite a bit I mean it it, it can be dealt with I mean it, the um Brewer Brook or the Ross site 10 15 years ago was they were coming from many towns around and unloading ATVs, but we got them out of there, but blockages and environmental police and the word got around and I haven't seen one in there in, in years. At this point. I don't think there has been. So we can do it. All right, so you'll take care of that, Walter? That's great. All right, um, next on the agenda. Oh, um, Mass Trails Grant. Although, I mean, I put this in there because there had been some you know, email was back and forth started by Robin, but then it sounds like Robin and Walter both decided it was prudent just to <laughs> wait and let the state do, do the groundwork first. Yeah, this is for the uh, Mass Central Rail Trail, which I think we decided was separate from this. Are we still going to proceed with that one separate from Conservation Commission? And we had a talk with, uh, we talked with, uh, was it Mary that we talked to? I think we were pursuing the Mass Central Rail Trail stuff separate from conservation and the other trails work that we do. And I don't remember the reason. Oh, I think it's even more complicated than that. You know, so there was a rail, there was a rail trail committee that don't get, Walter, don't, don't say anything. There was a rail trail committee <laughs> that was completely separate from conservation. And somehow we got like pinned to, it got pinned to us, even though it was really none of our, gotcha, okay. it wasn't ours at all. But then, you know, we started to hear some information, you know, you know partly thanks to you that um, the, um, 
you know, the state was like moving forward with this anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and, and Walter's recent comment in the emails was that, you know, just the state will get to us. And when that happens, then, then, then we can work on getting grants for purchasing yeah. stuff. They were supposed to have this feasibility study out last year. And I, I suspect, and this is purely speculation, but I think they're holding it up based on what's going on with Eversource in Sudbury with the rail trail section there, because it's got to come through there before it gets to Hudson and Berlin. And so I, I suspect that they're waiting to resolve that issue, which is ongoing in Sudbury before they kind of move forward with the plans from Berlin and beyond. What happens? So, What's going on in Sudbury? So Eversource is trying to build, I believe it's, I haven't really followed it too closely, but they're trying to build a um, I I underground. Like what was that? Aren't they, isn't it, oh, is it underground? I don't remember if it's an underground right. or There's overhead. There's power train, lines coming through. Yeah, so yeah. either way, they're trying to bundle it with the Mass Central Rail Trail. We're working with the state to, to make it happen, and the residents of Sudbury were really upset about it. Because um, if I'm not mistaken, it, it provides like a second feed to the town of Hudson or something. But regardless of all that, um, I, I suspect that that's what they're waiting on is to see how that all gets resolved. Right. Before, Didn't because... the town of Sudbury sue to stop it? I Did don't it remember. It... It, they might have, but uh, last I heard there was some movement on it. So, um, but again, it's still in progress. So purely speculation, but I, I suspect that that's what they're waiting on. And so, um, but anyway, Clinton just got the Mass Trails grant to purchase their section of land from Pan Am Railways. And they're very anxious for us to close the deal. You know, apparently they negotiated a price and Pan Am is willing to sell the town of Berlin um, that parcel, which I think goes off, I forget what the address is off Boylston Road, but it's, it's um, there's a section of land there that we can buy, but and it seems like either way, the state will probably go that way. But, you know, if the state's going to come in and build it anyway, do we really need, do we need to spend the money, first of all? Do we need to put the time into, like, getting grants and all that? I mean, Clinton has gone, you know, that Clinton Greenway, um, they've gone through, I mean, they've been working on that for, like, 20 years. So they've put a ton of time into, you know, trying to make this happen between um, the tunnel part of it and acquiring the land and if I'm not mistaken I thought the state said that they weren't going to go through the tunnel they, they had a whole other plan so it's possible that some of the work that they've done is you know all for naught I don't know but that's that's one of the reasons why I haven't moved forward on anything is because I don't think it makes sense for us to just put the time or money into a, what it, we don't know what the plan is you know and I don't think anybody you know given how contentious it's been in the past um, I think anybody that's a proponent of the rail trail would probably agree that we just want a rail trail. We don't really care all that much, you know, which way they want to go or, or, you know, any specific details. So, um, you know, until we have the feasibility study, I don't think we can really move forward with anything. Okay, great. Thanks. So. Um, a couple of quick agenda items and then a not so quick agenda item. Um, the Forest management issues, um, I think um, Walter and Dan Sims and I had some discussion about, you know, working, you know, trying to work with a forester to help us develop some management plans um, for some of the lands here. That's sort of starting in development, so I don't really have much to talk about with that yet. Um, I had been in, next on um, land management for, um, uh, Peach Hill. Um, I had been in contact with uh, Dave uh, Smith, the from DPW, um, and he was about like making sure that there's no motorized vehicles that enter into the Wendler area or the Peach Hill area. And so he actually came up with this great thing. He found some cement blocks with like bolts coming off the top and dumped them. And so I'm going to work with. Um, the fire chief to get some chain and keys so that, you know, and make sure that they have keys. So if they need to access that for emergency vehicles, they will, but otherwise you won't be, pick, kids won't be able to drive their pickup trucks in there. Um, and then finally, oh, uh, Laura um, 
I, Krista Collins and I were in contact and she reached out to a couple uh, to Carolyn and Walter and we're going to have a um, a Zoom thing on Monday. Uh, it's just three of us, so it doesn't violate the open meeting law. Um, and we're going to try to sort of reboot this process, process, uh, project. Um, okay, so I'm sure everyone spent a lot of time going over the wetlands bylaw draft. Okay, before we get there, I just have two quick things. Okay. Uh, Robin, I think I finally successfully made you an admin on the Facebook page. Okay. So um, let me know. Uh, let's just touch base like tomorrow. I think it okay. takes. I think it takes like overnight or something. Um, and the trail signs for the Wendler property that I sent you pictures of. I had to totally redo. <laughs> it was th that pretty much right after I took the picture and sent it to you is when things went downhill. So, but I have redone them. They hopefully, it, it, they're in the process. Uh, they're, oh, I was so mad. Uh, but anyway. Uh, it's hot and buggy in the woods right now anyway, so that's all right. Exactly. Uh, so I think, I think that's all I had for additional stuff. Did anybody else have any quick things before we, uh... yes, Liz? There's a couple trees down around the Brewer Brook um, path. Thanks for reminding me, I forgot about those trees. So one well, of them is yeah. on that rock, right? Near that rock crop, you know, that, like it's on the, you know, it's, um, is it, I think it's a, a maple and it's, or maybe a pine, and it, it, it cuts across that rock that you have to scale when you're going around. That's one of them. Where's the other one? I'll have to check the emails. Should I send them to you? Because people around here walk it so much. Yeah, well, I tell I you, that there's, on the there's, and, there's one stretch I'm not going to clear, you know, and that's that that's an access path. Um, there, there's like a, you know, there's an access path. There's two access paths there. They run parallel to each other both heading, I think, roughly west, but, and that's the responsibility of somebody else to clear. You know, that's like, you know, that, that that's like a water line or something, or a sewage line, somebody else. There's, there's multiple down trees on one of those. I'm not clearing those. But on Can the, you, on the- Where is that access path? You I'd have to show you on the map. Okay. Maybe when we sign that thing, I can, I can show you on the map. Yeah. But if you could like X out where the other trees are, then I can go get them. Okay, because you have a chainsaw. I have a nice chainsaw. Woohoo! All right, thanks. Yep. All right. Um, anything else? All right. So, was everybody riveted by um, reading the MAC, the MACC boilerplate um, wetlands bylaw thing? I'm going to open truly it up and riveted. pardon me truly riveted truly riveted all right so <clears throat> there we go let me screen share <sighs> hey you didn't include my comments yes i did oh there, you. there they are <laughs> yeah, it just, I have to make it small enough. There we yeah. go. Okay, so um, the, the purpose, the, so section one purpose, I don't believe I changed very much or anything. Um, you know, I just basically put in a, a header and took out some of the other stuff, but um, I might have removed things like you know, shell fisheries and things like that. But it, it's, you know, things that would have applied to a, a town along the ocean. Um, but I otherwise didn't change very much. Um, so then under jurisdiction, um, it, there's, you know, or maybe I should just, as a preamble, 
it might be useful for us to think about things that we absolutely need to have in here, we want to have in here, and also how those things may or may not impair, you know, what, what things in the bylaw would make it more or less likely to be passed at an all town meeting. Um, you know, Carolyn and I were at the selectmen's meeting in February where people identified some things which were, they were opposed to or were rather um, significant um, in their eyes and would complicate our efforts to get enough votes to pass the bylaw. Um, so, and you know, some of this has to do with isolated lambs subject to, to flooding. Um, you know, th those aren't protected by the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, you know, what is, you know, so the question is, to what, to what degree do we want to protect those? Um, and some of them are potential vernal pools or vernal pools. Um, you know, the concern is that um, potential vernal pools could be a lot of things. And as we discovered ourselves a year and a half ago, a lot of things that look like they should be vernal pools aren't necessarily vernal pools. Um, so what are people's thoughts about vernal pools? You know, as we sit here, I actually don't know what protection they have and don't have at this time. Maybe that if anybody knows, please inform me. You know, he, it is a vernal pool. Well, it isn't certified, therefore nothing we can do about it. I think there is. I think the Army Corps has some authority, if, if, there, but I'm not sure. So, If it's certified, there are some protections, but they're pretty close to the high water mark of the pool. Yeah. Um, you, you, know, the, the, you know, the current protections allow um, certified vernal pool, pools to be encroached to be encroached upon pretty closely to the edge of the vernal pool, but you cannot, but the pool itself is protected. Um, I don't remember uh, the exact language. I looked into this about a year and a half ago. Isolated lands subject to flooding aren't protected. At all. At all. Period. No, I, yeah. And Walter, the Army Corps only cares about isolated land subject to flooding if the intent is to fill it. Yeah. If it's not gonna be filled, they don't care. Yeah, they were the ones who put the kibosh to those um, proposed soccer fields down on the- Correct. Idea. But when I talked to them concerning the property down on Gates Pond Road, they would only get involved if um, filling was going to happen. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, uh, do we want to protect vernal pools or not? Are they, you know, yes. it's the Conservation Commission. And, and uh, I think there is some pretty good data and scientific studies showing basically how far around if you if you can fill up to a vernal pool you might as well kill it because they need land out of the water and around the vernal pools in order for these critters to survive so there's got to be some sort of buffer around those i think right. it's 100 feet i don't i think it's more complicated than that carolyn um and um but i i don't remember the details i'm sorry i it's just been busy and I didn't have a chance to talk, check that before this meeting. Um, and the last time I looked at it was a year and a half ago. But there's a more, there's a more basic question, which is the differentiation between vernal pools and potential vernal pools. Um, Cause when you start talking, it, my understanding from the last February's meeting is that when you start talking about in any isolated land subject to flooding, most of which really are potential vernal pools, um, that gets people's hackles up quite a bit. Well, um, but if you read my note. Uh, I did. Yeah, we can put language in that says there is the ability to prove that it is not a vernal pool and then fine. Not, yes, theoretically, but you can only prove that once a year over a, like a two month period. Um, I mean, it, so if somebody has an NOI in June, you, you say, well, okay, fine, but we have to wait a year, you know, on, for, you, for you to be able to do anything. Um, and, you know, that's a long time. Do you have yeah. an alternative suggestion? 
Sh other than not including vernal pools? <laughs> no, I don't. That's the problem. You well, know, I would lead the word, forget about the isolated land subject to flooding. I mean, in my trail, I, I don't think there's an awful lot of that in town. And forget about the potential vernal pools. We want to talk about, you know, we think it's a vernal pool, but we have to wait until spring to test it. We can ask that to do that. And if it tests that it's not a vernal pool, fill the thing in. So stick, stick with the what? word vernal pool. <laughs> But, but yeah, that, that, that was a little contradictory, Walter. Um, again, the, you know, the problem is that, again, if, they, if it's an NOI that comes up in June and we can say, okay, that's nice, but, you know, we have to wait till next March or April before we can make a decision, they're going to complain that that's an unnecessary hardship. Um, and, but more to the point is they're going to vote against the bylaw. Um, you know, Can I say it, something here? Yeah, absolutely. I, I read this over and over again, and I'm like, okay, this the opposition that's been against this is going to scream at this wording. I watched Stephen just the other day. I mean, it, he does a nice job. It skips Sawyer's right in there with his back out, cleaning out the, the, the pond, cleaning yeah. out. All, <laughs> and there's other people doing it, too. And that's the group that's against well, it. If we're going to back off on these things, well, then we should just scrap the whole thing and save our, all our time and energy. Because well, this is why we're doing this. Well, no, okay, I so disagree with that. All. I'm, just, I'm just saying the opposition, that right there is going to... Yeah. Right, but what we have to do is sit down with them and, and as they have asked us to do, sit okay. down with them and say, okay, what, what are you going to give and what are we going to give? Right. But we have to go into that, as far as I'm concerned, we have to go into that um, negotiation with our wish list high. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm just, um, just bringing up a point. I'm not picking yeah, up. No, I, I agree. But I'm, I'm, if, if we are going to decide what they will oppose without talking to them, and well, go forth under those assumptions, then I'm out now. Well, I, first of all, I have, I have two comments, Carolyn. The first is, you know, it, it's not like this is our, you know, as far as going in high, this isn't the first game. This is, this is like- But we game. have never sat down with the people who would oppose these things prior to going to town meeting. That has never been done. Well, yeah, no, we did in February. That wasn't town meeting. That was just yeah, in, that no, was a selectman's really meeting. But we submitted a document without talking right. to anybody first. Yes, that's fair. Um, but you know, I mean, the risk of going in high is they'll respond. You guys never listen and never learn. This is the same thing over and over and over again. You never listen. You never learn. Amen. That's the risk, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, let me finish. Go ahead, Walter. finish, and then I'd like to. Um, and Carolyn, with respect to your other thing, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff in this document, completely independent of isolated land subject to flood flooding, that we want. For example, the 25 foot no touch zone, or the ability to make fines. You know, I. But that, but those are the only two. <clears throat> I mean, essentially, the the these two points right here in this paragraph, and those two points are really all that we're looking for. True? Um, well, th there's other things that, there are also other things, although, I mean, some of it gets to, you know, when I start thinking about other things, I get squeamish because we really do need a conservation agent. Um, Correct. <laughs> so, um, all right. So go ahead, Walter, what were you gonna say? Um, you know, John, I'm listening to you. Don't, don't take this wrong. You know, you're fairly new in town. You're fairly new at talking to people. I know uh, when you're saying this business about you people never learn, John, I know who you're quoting. Uh, you know, the other aspect of this law, writing it's one thing, but getting out and doing the politicking is another thing. And we, if we're going to have it, make up your mind right now that you can't just write it and put it in there and sit back and twiddle your thumbs. We've got to get information out there. And you've been exposed to a couple of people who are just against this. And I think there are, you know, it's a minority of people 
who are going to be impacted by this whatsoever. The vast majority of people in town love Berlin for what it is or what it was, and they still imagine it to be. And I'm pretty confident we can get through a good bylaw. Um, we've got to do the, if we don't do this vernal pool thing, don't do it. We've got to come in with a, with a logical uh, offset. I even think we should go to 30 feet on our setback. Well, you know, let's w wait on the setback for a sec. Yeah, um, but um, the vernal pool, put it in and go for it. If we don't have that, we might as well hang it right. up. I mean, I think we're very specific about, um, say, about using the National Heritage Map that identifies potential vernal pools and certified vernal pools um, as our baseline. Well, that if, is somebody, if someone has a puddle and it's not on the mass, National Heritage Map, then we're not... Then well, that is a huge difference. That is a huge difference. What is um, You know, and one, one thing this document doesn't have, but other but town bylaws do have is a definition section. Now, a lot of definition sections are left to um, the regulations. I did a lot of reading of other towns' bylaws. It was just freaking gripping. Um, so we could, for instance, have a definition section that says vernal pools is, you know, certified vernal pools and potential vernal pools. And just like a potential vernal pool is that identified by the, that, you know, the GIS, the state GIS map. Right. Perfect. And, that's a, I think that's, I think that's a fair impartial assessment. Yeah. And if it's not on that map, then this, then the vernal pool section of this bylaw doesn't pertain to it. Uh, that sounds like a good compromise. Done. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Once again, Carolyn. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, I thought we were going to get rid of her. I guess not. Mm. <laughs> um, you get, we got to get through this first. All right. No, 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 no. I'm totally, that was, that was sarcasm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Let's talk about the non, no disturb zone. Uh, did we, so did we talk about what the setback is going to be on the vernal pool? What is it going to be? We don't know yet. I th we have to do research. I, I think, I think read. what people it, read, 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 read. Um, I, I think my opinion would be that non-certified is subject to the same regulations as certified unless. Yeah. Okay. Now, but, but that's it's, but, but Carolyn, do you want stricter regulation, stricter control than what the state has? Uh, I I would have to familiarize myself with what those right. regulations say. So uh, my memory is you can get up pretty close to those pools. Um, so please, everybody, take a chance and you know try to figure out what the what the, actually the current regulations are. Um, and if anybody wants to access to the Mac. MACC handbook, just pay for it and, and I'll make sure you get reimbursed. All right. um, well, I have the Wetlands Protection Act right here. I'll see if I can find it. Okay. All right. So let's go to the no disturb zone thing. Um, I, so uh, interestingly, um, the majority of wetland bylaws don't have a no disturb zone. Um, it's the minority that do. Um, and the no disturb zone is usually either 25 or 30 feet. Um, and there are other options. There's also such thing as like a 50 foot no build zone. Um, the, but the other thing that was interesting in reading about no disturb zones or buffer zones has to do with sort of the science of buffer zones. And it, you know, the, the distance is just one aspect of it. You know, two other as equally important aspects are um, the type of ground cover and the slope. So, for instance, you know, um, you know, 25 feet of thick vegetation um, at a 4% slope is as effective as, is, you know, is very is very effect can be very effective at uh, filtering out pollutants and uh, runoff water and providing habitat, whereas a hundred feet at a twenty five percent percent slope um, 
in a oak forest with you know the with a uh, dense canopy and not much underbrush it isn't very good at all you know and it, so you can you can make it a hundred foot two hundred foot doesn't matter because the water is just going to run down right down the slope so it isn't just about feed it's about other things that are hard to quantify and, and it's really you know trying to quantify that in, in a bylaw is very difficult um, what I decided on is that um, the, the reason I was leading more towards 25 feet than 30 feet simply is because we've been going with 25 feet. People are familiar with it. Um, and again, I, I'm thinking of the politics of it of, is just people say, oh yes, yes. Okay, so this just, you know, um, uh, makes official the wetland policy. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. So that's yeah. why I went for 25 versus 30 feet. And are we saying no disturb, no touch, no build? Um, no disturb. I, I was using no disturb and no touch as synonymous. Um, I can use the word no touch. I, I, you know, I, I think I picked that up. Um, actually, I think I cut and pasted this particular section from some other area. You know, one thing that um, I think about here I, I tend to lean on no disturb um, with, you know, we're finding out every week here what's going on. These trees are growing up. People might need to cut trees, big red maples hanging, you know, lay, leaning towards the house or a bunch of uh, bittersweet, a lot of invasives. Um, I think no disturb where you don't gouge the earth and pull stumps and move earth. Uh, and strip the land is good enough. And in the 25 foot buffer, by the way, isn't strictly for filtering. It's a wildlife corridor. Yes. Um, the riparian corridors, you know, the bed banks, uh, the wetlands, the budding wetlands and strips of upland going all along these areas are very important for wildlife. So um, we, we need right. it for that reason too, but we, it, it, Right. So no disturbed, and, and the definition of disturbed would be clearing, you know, more than 10% of the trees or something like that. If somebody goes in and wants to cut a stick of firewood, they should be able to do it. Right. Um, I mean, th this, this paragraph here talks to the fact that there is a little wiggle room, um, allows for, you know, exceptions or di discussion. Um, and the, um, the wildlife corridor, it depends on what kind of wildlife you're talking about. You know, the, the small... <laughs> You know, birds and salamanders, 25, 30 feet is okay. Larger critters, you're talking about 100 feet, 150, 200 feet. So it depends on the, on the wildlife you're talking about. Well, John, I, I'm, I was in wildlife and, and um, you know, the larger critters, I don't know what you're talking about. Fox, coyotes, bears, deer, moose, they're running through library yards and people's yards. And uh, so the 25 foot card, it does give them a little bit of cover, but I think <clears throat> the mink and the and the fur bearers and the, uh, the the animals that are more reclusive need that cover once they get out and have travel corridors along the, along the riparian corridors. I you know we, you said earlier you know you can't legislate put a formula in there how what the slope is the type of cover and all make it's got to be made twenty five feet and that's it. Okay. Um, this part here just has to do that. that I always stick, stick that in there for the agricultural things. It, it, this paragraph could be expanded, but you know, it's part of the Wetlands Protection Act. Um, the, the exceptions and exceptions thing again, this is kind of boilerplate. Um, application fees. Um, Uh, there's some, so Carolyn, your, my reading of the handbook indicates that we can, you know, because of the way that the um, OCs are written and they have that page for um, wetlands bylaws, we don't really need to form up our own permits and documents. We can just use what we already use. Um, I mean, there's, there's a page that we never use um, in the OOC because we don't have a municipal bylaw. So it, it's already we, that we would then use that page if necessary. We wouldn't, it, that we would only fill out that page if something gets triggered. 
um, if there's nothing I triggered, we still wouldn't fill up the page. So I do have some information about the vernal pool. And, cool. Um, so you are correct, John. Um, if it's a certified vernal pool, it does not necessarily get a hundred foot setback unless it is part of a larger resource area. Right. Um, but so it says vernal pools that are not certified may also be protected by local conservation commissions or DEP if credible scientific evidence is presented prior to the end of the appeals period for a superseding order of conditions issued by DEP. A conservation commission or DEP on appeal can incorporate protective conditions into an OOC that would prevent the impairment of the wildlife habitat value of the pool and its 100 foot vernal pool habitat if the pool is not certified. Um, so I think there is credible reason for us to create a 100 foot setback. From, from certified or potential? Both, unless it's proven that it's not a it, there, there is always the option to prove that it is not a uh, vernal pool. Yeah. If, it, if it's on the map that we talked about earlier, that's the definition of a vernal pool. And 100 right. foot applies to it, and there is the option to prove that that's right. wrong. And the 100 foot, re, and the reason for the 100 foot is wildlife habitat. Right. Is pr to prevent the impairment of the wildlife habitat value of the pool. So if those things can be proven to not be relevant to a particular pool, um, then the 100 foot setback would not apply. Does that make sense? Yeah. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> okay. So that, that's in the Wetlands Protection Act, right? This actually is um, from the Division what? of Fisheries and Wildlife. Okay. Um, guidelines for the certification of vernal pool habitat. All right. Well, I mean, if you want, you can put a. Uh, I can um, email this document to everybody. Yes, and you know, you can add comments under review. I can add some edits. You know. Um, so good. All right. I like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, the next pink part. Um, so th this is, this came up when I was talking to Patrick about the solar farm. You know, there was that period of time where he hadn't been paid for a long time. And he had mentioned to me that what some towns do is they have this special account so, and this would be, you know, relevant to big developers is they would actually deposit a wad of cash into the account that's overseen by the treasurer. And then, you know, when the, our consultant needed to get paid, it would get paid out of that account. Um, that way, you know, they're not like getting frustrated by not getting paid. Now, as it turns out, he did get paid by the solar people and I believe he's getting paid by the Highland Ridge people. Um, my trepidation about this is just it's just more paperwork that somebody has to do um so um i mean it's a good idea to have one of these accounts but like somebody's got to keep an eye on it and that's really the job of a of a conservation agent well um, so i don't know that it i think uh, for me, I would foresee the biggest problem. It's just like when we get bills from KP Law. Um, it, it's how it's how do we decide how much money should be in the account? Right. And then but, a bill gets submitted. We vote to write a check, or you decide to write a check. Either way. Um, and your money. And it and it gets paid. So you, all right. So right. You, you, I mean, you, I guess that's how I would see the the process working. I hope so, because um, <laughs> I got to um, tell you, there's there's just a lot of little T's to cross. Um, right. I mean, Robin would 
keep track of it. They really, most of it, where I think, would fall to the treasurer. Yeah, she's going to quit. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't quit. That's a long couple of paragraphs there. Right. Um, well, some of that just has to do with, you know, don't be a jerk. You know, um, that's, that's what a lot of this is about. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'd want to understand it a little bit better. I mean, it's like the way Carolyn talked about it, it seems like it could be that simple, but, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, whenever you're talking about taking someone's money and holding on to it, there has to be a lot of, um, a, a lot of words saying what you're going to do with their money while you're holding on to it. And so uh, back up above, you said, was it the town treasurer that holds it? Yes. Is that Okay, yeah. so maybe would it actually fall on them then versus us? I mean, I, I think there'd be a it little might bit. Actually. Of... It might actually, it might fall right. on them. So I, I'm pretty sure that the planning board does it this way. Um, so I can certainly ask how they do it. That would be awesome. Um, yeah, it seems like this might be a little bit more administrative work for them versus us. If that's the case, then we should leave it in because um, it is it is an important thing, you know. Tonight, hopefully, is not the last discussion of this anyway. So we're, this is a good discussion tonight, and we'll look at it again. Yes, I agree. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome. All right. Next, uh, notice and hearings. So the, the, right here, this is a 300 feet thing. Um, you know, the Wetlands Protection Act is 100 foot. Um, the Carolyn had mentioned before, last meeting that like in Berlin, everybody hears about it anyway. So we don't really need to impose 200 extra feet. Um, and that it just, the, the reason for leaving it the way it is, is basically for applicants, it's just a one less thing they have to keep track of. Um, oh yeah, Berlin does it this way as opposed to that way. What are we, uh, what is this? Oh, sorry. So no, no, you, you, right now it's a hundred feet. And MACC recommended 300 just because, um, and I, it just, it doesn't seem necessary to me. Look at the hearings we've had. How many uh, butters come in? I mean, you know, the 100 foot should suffice, and, and I agree with you, the 300 foot is a little overdoing it. Okay. I'll just fix that right now. Maybe when we're negotiating, we can say, you know, MACC recommends 300, but we have just 100. That's not going to do anything. <laughs> no, nobody else is going to do it. Um, right. So, Carolyn, yeah, you're right. I, we don't yet want to do the, um, be responsible for the um, um, postings in the paper and stuff. Right. What are they going to do with all these newspapers going out of business? Anyway. Um, so get posted on Facebook. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't that be sad? Yes. Mm. Um, so that you're right. I, we need to reword this so it's clear that they're they're still doing it because we can always amend it later. The other possibility is that it, we could it, try to leave it vague and then we could deal with it later in the regulations. Remember the, the, our discussion about this um, nine months ago, where we talked about like sometimes you can like it's easier to amend the regulations than, than it is the bylaw. Um, right. So yeah, that, that might, still doesn't make sense to me. Uh, right, I, I, I can't fully, I can't make you happy. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, spoken like, like a married man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, next pink thing. Um, oh, so this, this like this was an issue today. So we, I have to ask the applicant if it's okay to continue the hearing. If they say no, the hearing closes. So this allows us to say, okay, we're going to continue the hearing because we need X, Y, or Z. Um, you know, they could potentially put up a fuss, but... Um, we may want to add a limit to that so that people don't think it's going to be like an endless hearing. You know what I mean? Like if, if we leave it vague, people may say, well, that just means you can extend this, you know, for years. No, they would go straight to the DEP. I don't think we have to do that. Cause I mean, the obvious thing is the DEP would, would force us to, you know, or just take over the case, you know, if, okay. like, yeah, no, that, that would, 
that would most certainly um, not fly. The, you know, okay. We, we would get in trouble for that. Okay. Um, Oh, um, so this has to do with the fact that I, I think we're, we can leave this in here, but it, it really, we mostly can use the, um, OC, the form five, the OC form. I don't think we need to have our own forms. Um, we, you know, we can just add an addendum to the current DEP forms, the OOC form. That's keeping it simple. Yeah. So I think that we could probably strike this. The only complicating factor there is, you know, the, the appeal to a bylaw issue, a municipal bylaw issue goes to the um, uh, a court. Um, which court does it go to? Um, I think the local superior court, it doesn't go to DEP. So like if someone wanted to, ch you know, challenge our 20 foot, 20, 25 foot no touch zone or no disturb zone, um, it would not go to DEP, it would go to the superior court. Um, w w on that case, we would win, but anyway. Um, coordination with other boards, okay. So like, the reason I, Carolyn, you thought this was a good idea, I, and I don't like I'm against coordinating with other boards. It's just that the way this was written seemed to think, look, again, I was just thinking this is just a lot of paperwork. Right. Um, well, right. So that's why I wrote, make it simpler, but keep the basic idea, because I agree. There's a lot of within 14 days written documents, blah, blah, that would be a lot. So instead, we'll just write long something along the lines of Louise will be in contact with the boarding, zoning board. <laughs> Talk to Louise. <laughs> all right, so I'll just reword it and make it all Louise's problem. Okay. <laughs> right. um, so that's the first three pages. Right, all that right. Our homework. Okay, okay, okay. So keep fit, let, but um, we're gonna do the rest of it. We're gonna go over, all the way to, to page eight next time. Um, and I will go over it again and try, I'll start making some edits. A lot of this stuff was just highlighting as some of it was adding, but a lot of it was highlighting, but I'll start making some edits and I'll, I'll send it around again, okay? Okay. Um, so, cause okay. I would like to get this done sooner rather than later so that we can start meeting with people. Agreed. All right. Um, so your homework is the rest of the damn document. <laughs> All right. Um, any other issues? No. Nope. Just a reminder, I'm going to be away on vacation for the next meeting. So I'll try and um, no, get we're some just simply to beforehand. All vacations are canceled. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. Like UMass Memorial, the hospital, UMass Medical, there's a travel ban. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah. Like, not even to like, New, Freaking New Maine. Maine. Yeah, I don't know. It's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, they don't. And for me, it's a little, well, I have to read the fine print because I'm in private practice. For, for Jess, it's an absolute. She is not allowed to leave the state. Wow. wow. Yeah. At least we have some good places to go in the state. <laughs> uh, go to the Cape, you can go to the no, Berkshires. Yeah, there's a lot of rules coming out. I, I'm, I'm yeah. back to a building in Framingham and I have to prove that I haven't left the state. And how does one do that? GPS tracking system. Here. His ankle. As, it's an ankle bracelet. Yeah. Oh, it's an ankle bracelet. All, That's he right. already has an ankle bracelet. You guys haven't <laughs> yeah. noticed this. I've stopped yeah. by to get a signature. That's why he you've already... never seen him in shorts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> actually, they're monitoring the Easy Pass quite heavily. Yep. I'm not surprised. Oh, by that'll that. work. Actually. Yep. Damn. Yep. They are. They and are they can very easily get your cell phone data. Yeah, exactly. turn off a cell phone. I'm going off the grid. Yeah, they are monitoring it. I'm going to stop shaving. Leave your phone at home. Uh, pay cash at the tolls. 
Um, okay, are there any other issues? Uh, there was, uh, I just oh. want to mention one thing. Um, was it last week, I think, I think it was, when we had that downpour in the afternoon, not this last one, but the one before that. Anyway, I was coming down 495, and I thought I was going to make the exit. I didn't. I was on the motorcycle, and down it came. Oh, dude. I came down 62. I don't normally go this way. I always go up the back way up to Barnes Hill Road up by Linden Street. I don't like the five corners, but this time with the pouring rain, I figured I'd stay on the main drag. Right at the five corners before that, on the right with that construction that's going on, there was a river of brown sediment just going right down the North Brook. Oh, no. Um, yes, a lot of rain. Um, they do have a catch basin right there, but for some reason it didn't divert into the catch basin. It diverted down by the road, go down the road a little bit, and just before that little bridge that goes over it on the right, it has a path that goes right down below. Now, that was extremely heavy rain, but I didn't it's know. It's the if, season. Yeah. Yeah, so I just, I don't it, it, go it that stops. way, but this way I did, and it was like, I mean, there was a lot of rain coming down, so it was, it was not a normal situation. But I, Do they have any hay bales up there at all? No, they put a beautiful uh, catch basin down by the road and some rocks and everything else. Right, but the backside of their property goes down into Northbrook. Right, it, it's the, at Butts Northbrook. Right, the, I, I, I did it. ask them to let us know when they were starting construction, but that was like four, three years ago or something. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the landscaping is nice, but the water management could use a little work, I think, especially on heavy rains, put it that way. That, uh, I, that's the only time I've gone by, and I guess it was pouring that day. I mean, it was coming down in buckets, but uh, right. so, so, John, I don't, I don't know what we do about permit, it. I assume. Huh? John? I don't you, remember. I would imagine you would have had to. I, I, I don't remember, actually, because... Mm -hmm. um, I don't actually. I don't because that one. I was wondering about that property, but I don't remember actually approving that permit because that might have been approved before I was doing it. Just because you know. No. Uh, no, not a building permit. I don't remember approving it. I I, I can't say it's not. Right. But I mean, right. you know, the, okay. there's no uh, NOI or anything for that property. No, because they, like I said several years ago, when I talked to them they were staying out of the 200 foot riverfront and i said that's awesome but can you just let us know so we can come and check the silt fencing before you start mm -hmm. and they said oh, sure. yeah well this was the water coming down the road and get right on the 62 right along the edge and then you'll, you'll see a path you'll see a trench right before Going over the, uh, well, I guess the bridge, but like before you even get to the railroad tracks on the right, you'll see the path where the water just kind of made a trench right into there. Oh, so the water came off the property onto Route 62. Correct. Then and down then Route 62. 62 and then right in, but it was carrying a lot of silt. So it was coming right down the driveway, the yeah. uh, so-called Paula Road. Uh, actually, you know, um, people that live in that neighborhood said that, you know, that silt has been washing down that driveway in the past in rainstorms so it's not mm -hmm. the first time okay hmm. now there's a case that group is in before the board of health for variances they laid out the lots without consulting the board of health and now they're looking for distance variances i think at their wells and their sewage systems and so the board of health is in the same position that we're in with this lot down in river road but it's on that same oh, the um the 100 River Road, the spooky world issue we're dealing with, I was up there the day yesterday and came down and there's a massive ditch washed down there and I could see where it was all over the road. And I bumped into Dave in the um, Smith, the, the highway superintendent this morning, and I asked him about it. And he said, oh yeah, the Conservation Commission is right on top of that. Is that something we don't know, John? Or? No, they, they um, no, I, I got an email. Um, I, I, I reported there was already an enforcement order in place on that property. I wasn't really sure. Um, and then Margaret got involved and I, I can't remember offhand what she said, but it, it was a weird thing. I was like, cause it, it wasn't into wetland. It was just into the road, you know? Yeah. So like the, it didn't really, because it was on, there's no wetlands there. It was right, just, that's right, yeah. So I like, I just, oh. Okay. 
I, that's what I told him. He said, oh, yeah, I catch bass and it runs across the street. Well, there's still no wetlands across the street. So uh, mm -hmm. that is for a couple hundred yards. So. Yeah, so I, I, I didn't really know. I, I, mean, it wasn't, I wasn't going to do anything different because we are yeah. in the enforcement arm of the mm -hmm. property. Um, back to that Steve's observation, what, is, what should we do? Yeah, is it a highway the problem because it went onto the highway road or? No, I mean, we have jurisdiction if, it, if it's something that is outside of the resource area that is impacting a resource area. Impacting the resource area, we absolutely have jurisdiction. Okay. Um, that Dave or, um, Dan, or, um, or other Pat, who do we have looking at that for us? No one. We're not involved there we're at not, all. Yeah, we're not involved yeah, there at no, all. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we can, I mean, I guess we can do one of a couple of things. We could stop over there and say, hey, can you put, can you, we see this, can you fix this? Otherwise, we're going to have to issue an enforcement order. We can issue an enforcement order. We can talk to the building inspector and see if he would like to talk to them. I guess it really depends on what route we want to take. Well, it happened once, and uh, if we get another rainstorm, it's going to happen again. Do oh, it's it, it yeah. again. Right. They definitely need to be notified, and they definitely need to try to do something to stop it from happening. Hmm. They have a beautiful catch basin out front, but obviously it wasn't catching it. <laughs> well, at, th at this point, we have jurisdiction. And we should send an enforcement order, and we should put Dave or Pat on it. Well, so Caroline, at a point where we could issue an enforcement order, or we could ask them to 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 mitigate first. Um, wh what are your and thoughts? Depending on the response we get from that, then decide whether to issue yeah. an enforcement order or not. I usually like to make a personal contact first. That's just my preference. But I, I agree. I think that's the right way to go. Well, I believe with Carol, and if we don't get the right response, then we go to the next level. Yep. All right. So who's going to reach out to these people? Steve. Who are who are they? Steve. Hey, well, who are they? Do I just <laughs> up there? Donate. Right. We. Yeah. I have. No idea. I mean, so if you if you call the inspector's office, they'll let you know. But I I I, I have no contact with these people. I don't either. Okay. Right, because we haven't been involved. So, but if you've, oh, Leanne, are you still around? Leanne, sleeping, wake up, Leanne. Here, I'm here. Ah, ha ha, ha ha. Did right. you, were you, were you pay, even vaguely paying attention? I was actually. Um, um, I could think you... we can look into it and give a call to the inspector's office. I don't recall that they've actually pulled a building permit at this point in time. So are they just doing site work? I believe so. I, and I, I might not be remembering correctly, but I do not recall processing a building permit. All right, that well, that would building. explain, John, why you don't remember approving one. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> so far, they've only, dementia. <laughs> so far, they've only been doing site work. Yeah. I don't think, right, I think Leanna's right. They have not applied for a building um, permit. I, but I can reach out to also the planning board. Um, they probably have na information, name, a contact, something like that. So I'll, I'll try to investigate that tomorrow. Thank you, Luanne. If you could give that information to Steve, then Steve can contact them and, and then get back to all of us. All righty, I'll work on it tomorrow. Thanks, yeah, guys. Thank you. Great. Well, the board of health has the contact information because um, somebody involved with the project was at the you know, attended Zoom, by Zoom, the uh, Neil something was at the meeting last night. <clears throat> For the board, of, right, Board of Health would. Board of sure. Health, right. Yep. All right, I will investigate. Right, and I think it was also stated that they were going to approach the zoning board about some um, variances also. That also has not happened yet. No. <clears throat> It was like six or seven, I think, Walter, wasn't it about six or seven very um, variances that they were requesting from the two different boards? Yeah, yeah. 
What was the general Board of Health attitude about the variances they were asking for? Um, Pretty strong on it. I mean, the chairman said that uh, they, Berlin is, uh, you know, basically not Hudson or Northborough or anything. We, we have a good Board of Health and uh, we never give variants. They don't give variances on new construction at all. Good. Right. Yeah, there's no reason to. Right. And they asked. Right. Remember that, Carolyn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> well, that was all approved anyway now. What is? The River Road one. No, no it's not. approved it tonight. It's approved. No. <laughs> all right. Are there any other issues? Um, I just wanted to bring up that back in uh, the spring, um, we had said that, um, you know, postpone Earth Day to the fall. Do we want to pursue that? No. Um, I, I think it's, un, uh, I, I think if we try to, we'll probably get pushback from the town. Uh, I think, you know, town administrators are going to follow the lead of the state and the state's being very cautious about COVID-19. Okay. Um, so, right. because we did do a cleanup, but we did, you know, is that people... socially distant? Right. I mean, yeah. if we, if you could think of some socially distant stuff again that we could advertise, that'd be fine. Right. Um, but, you know, um, I, I it, my opinion, I, you know, I could be wrong, <laughs> but my well, opinion I... is that, yeah. Um, ah. Yeah. You know, they're they're going to want us to be pretty careful. Right. Um, well, what we did in April is we made bags available to people. Yeah. And, you know, well, you, you had mentioned an invasive right. stuff, which is good. Um, but again, I, it's, you know, that involves training that really should be hands on. And it, you right. know, it, I don't know, that, that may take some thought. Um, I mean, SVT does some invasive analysis, but they seem to take forever to actually pull the things up. Oh, okay. um, so, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I mean, put, put your thinking cap on. I mean, if you can come up with a way to have an Earth Day invasives hoedown that in a way that could be, <laughs> but, we, but the trouble is, you know, people, a lot, a lot of people have a very hard time identifying plants, frankly. I'm, I'm often appalled, but people don't even know what poison ivy looks like. I, right. Yeah, you <laughs> definitely have to do some training on what is right. invasive and you know, but I, but I, 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 you know, after like some people, it's like almost it's like being unable to read. They <laughs> they say that is a leaf, and that's about as far as they go. Um, right. it, it's you know you yeah you, you'd want to make sure that these people. I mean, I don't mean to. It's just weird. I just there's I know. A lot of well, we don't, don't want someone get, pulling all their poison ivy and then coming at us and saying, "Hey, right." That's what I got. Right. <laughs> or or pulling up like, you know, rare flora. And saying, well, like I thought it was, you know, what, pardon me? Like lady slippers? Exactly. Right. <laughs> you know. Thinking, oh, yeah, that's just a weed. Right. Just a weed. Have no fear. <laughs> You'll get matter. nobody out pulling up any kind of invasions. They won't go out and do it. Who give me? I it's hate. hopeless. No, yeah. no, I, I'm, I'm waging, this is like Battle of the Bulge at my property here. I, and I am making progress. I am Tom Hanks, and we are pushing back. Mm -hmm. I've made a lot of progress against this bittersweet. Wow. Round up. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, any other issues? Napalm. Yeah. Does, does Carolyn have, Carolyn hasn't paid up her dues in full yet, right? On my screen, everybody's got a certain size block with their face showing. Carolyn's has shrunk sideways. So she must Oh, yeah. Dues. What the heck? Yeah. Pay your dues up, will you? <laughs> I, no. I won't. <laughs> I don't mind. You have no control over that, free. Carolyn. <laughs> this is descending into silliness, so I will entertain a motion to adjourn the meeting. I move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. I second. No further discussion. So I won't allow any. Uh, we'll call <laughs> votes. John, aye. Walter, aye. Carolyn, aye. Louise, aye. Steve, me. Robin, aye. Liz. Hi. Great. Good night, everybody.